Hello, everybody. Wow, I'm right on time. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, and if you can hear me, can you just put the message in the chat? I would have allowed you guys to talk, but uh, everybody was just your mics was showing different things for me, and I felt yeah. So if you can hear me loud and clear, please put your message in my ch in the chat. My team members would be following you in the chat here. Yeah. It will also be on, it will be on YouTube too. If you get logged out, just go to YouTube. Yep, 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 yep. So they are there. I can see them on YouTube. I can see them here. My team members are here too on the chat. So let's go straight to business. Um, This is going to be, promises to be a very, very, straightforward to the point practical session i hope you pay attention and i hope you learn now the first thing is this first off zoom can only allow 100 people so that's the first thing so if you have been if you have been um if you are logged out because of network or anything because we are the way we are way more than the people that registered for this session is more than seven, eight times the hundred participants Zoom can take. Now I wanted to I wanted to buy more, but um for those who have attended my webinars, you've you've been in the session where I've given you stories of the day I bought. You know, this session is free. I'm not charging anybody any dime for this. And um I've, I've had time free sessions where I've paid for more people and it was not worth my time. So I'd rather just use Zoom and YouTube. So if you get logged out from Zoom, just go to YouTube, go to my channel click on live stream and you are good to go. Just go to live stream and you are good to go. So straight up, if you get logged out from Zoom once again, just try logging in. If you can't log in, if the capacity is full, just go to Zoom. Zoom Zoom is unlimited capacity. So just go to the Zoom and follow the live stream. And those in Zoom, um, it's good to have you. Uh, it's good to have every, everybody. Yeah. So thank you very much, everybody. Now, Another thing is this. Another thing I want to say is this. Now, the last time I had this session, the last time I had this session um, was I did it for a particular organization and it took me four hours. And it was also a free, I was just giving back. I like to give back. I like to teach. I like to share. Now, it took me four hours to, it took me four hours to, Everything I'm going to share with you it took me four hours, but I'm going to be sharing it in two hours. So I'm already compressing by, you know, by 50 or 100 percent. I don't know which mathematics. It's been long I did math in school. So I'm compressing this. My YouTube name is my name. It's Bengadebi. You just go to my name. I sent it as a mail to everybody. Um, the, My YouTube handle is Bengadebi. Let me just put it in the chat. I've not started recording because I just wanted to run through this ASAP. My YouTube handle is Benga B for those asking. And um, yeah, and my YouTube, just use my name or just use my name or YouTube or the handle. Just put my name or my name. My name is the same thing on all platforms. It's about uh, you need to uniformity. So we're already way behind schedule. So let's just go, let's go straight to the business. Now, um, so today I'll be talking about how to 10x your freelancing income with AI. Uh, how you can be the smart freelancer in 2024, not just hard working. Now, I particular, I most, I added this not just hard working because I didn't want people to misinterpret the smarts. Now, smartness means you would work because freelancing is there's work in freelancing, but you can work smartly to end big with little work, but there's still work there. That's why I didn't just say be the smart freelancer in 2024. 
and live because people can interpret it and be the smart and lazy. No, I want you to be the smart and hardworking freelancer. And that's why we're having this session. So yeah, let's go straight to the business. Um, Basically, my name is Benga Debi and um, most people or uh, few people, for those who know me, the few people know me as, few people know me as proud teacher. And why am I called proud teacher? Because I'm just proud to, to teach. That's just the idea of being a proud teacher. I'm proud to teach. Yeah. Can you guys see my screen? I, I'm trying something else. I want to know if you can see my screen. I'm using multiple screens. This is the first time I'm doing that. I'd like to know if you can see my screen. Can you guys hear me? I want to know if you can hear me too. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Because I'll just record straight up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Abiodo. Okay, let's go there. I need to record. Live stream is there. Let me just record. Please. Now, I like to record proud teacher because I'm proud. And um, in case you want to know the things I've done for myself, um, I've I've trained people, a lot of people. My students have trained people and I've, I have helped a lot of, I've helped thousands of people, tens of thousands. In the pandemic alone, I trained more than 10,000 people. That during the pandemic lockdowns alone. So I've trained a lot of people. Like and my students too, so I've trained other people. So it's been a ripple effect. Uh we've I've created people and they've also created people. Um, but so why should you why should you listen to me? Some of my student testimonials. I like to start with testimonials because uh my idea behind sharing testimonials is showing you what is possible so you can understand what you can do, you know. That's why I like to share testimonials. Now, in the testimonial, as you can see, um, these are some of my students who have earned some particular amount of figures. And please, I'm not using these figures to, I, I don't even need to be apologizing, but I'll just apologize. I don't need to, I can, I can just do my thing. But I'm using this to show you what is possible. I'm using this to open your mind. That's my idea behind doing this. I'm doing this so that your own mind gets open that if this person can do it, me too, I can do it. As you can see on this, on this before, as you can see on this before, you will see, you realize that the location here is Potakot, Nigeria, Nigeria. These are people from Nigeria in Nigeria. Funny enough, two of them are students. The last one is a, um, is a graduate, but two of them are still students. They are still studying as I'm speaking with you right now. So they are still, they are combining this with their school. So they are both in their final year. And one of the other last person has he has graduated. So just this is just showing you what is possible. Now, another reason why you should listen to me, especially for those in Nigeria. Now we have different kind of people in this session. Um, another reason you should listen to me is this figure right here. And I hope you can see this screen. Um, uh, if this screen is not motivating you enough, I believe you need to be motivated, especially if you are based in Nigeria or if you are even based in Africa. This is just for Nigeria. We can do the same figure for other currencies in Africa. The beauty of what I'm about to share with you is that you can learn how to, you can learn how to earn with first world currency and spend in third world countries currencies. So imagine if you are making those figures I shared with you. Imagine, um, I showed you an example of people who did some stuff now, for example. Now imagine if you've done, if you did 10% of this. If you did 10% of these figures here, let's look at the highest there is 200k. If you did 10%, it's 20k. But you now multiply it using the currency, you know that it makes sense. That's why I'm showing you this figure. Now, this class will be in three parts. Let me just tell you so that we'll jump into the class straight up. This class will be in three parts. Um, the first part is going to be fundamentals of freelancing. We'll have some practicals. I like practicals a lot. I'll be showing you. Um, then I'll also go into so practical is for newbies. If you're a newbie freelancer, if you're a beginner freelancer, if you're a freelancer who is earning peanuts, or if you are something, if you are doing nine to five and you want to at least jump to, you, go, you want to have the idea of having a side hustle, then the first part is for you, the freelancer one-on-one -on -one part is for you. Now the next part is for mid-level people. If you want to 10X your income in 2024, for those who are already making some kind of money. So if you've not made any money at all, pay attention to the first part. If you've made money, you want to make more, you want to 10x, pay attention to the second part. You cannot, if you've not made any money and you still want to make big money or you have the big dreams, pay attention to part one and part two. 
Then part three is using AI. We'll talk about AI generally, one of the theme of this session. Then we'll have one break in between, especially after when I run through part one, theory and practicals, we'll have a short break, maybe 10 minute break, we'll stretch our legs and we'll move. Maybe five minutes for the course of the live stream. I don't know if I can pause live stream. Yeah, but with that break, we'll just, you know, stretch our legs, then we'll just round up and continue. As I said, the last people I taught this session, it took me four hours because I like to pour all, my, all the things I know. Like, I'm not the kind of person, if you've known me or if you are getting to know me now, I'm not the kind of person that I, I hold knowledge. I don't like holding knowledge. So I like to pour everything. Everything I know, I pour to you, then you go and take use for yourself. So let's go into it straight up. Now, let me quickly share four stories before I go into theory. So because stories are things that we would always remember now. I'm an aspiring copywriter, so I'm learning to you know storytelling too. Now, stories are things you would always remember. That's why uh, the, in the first age of human beings, this you know form a big circle, tell stories, tales by moonlight, because you would always remember, and you can always even for those who are religious, you realize that there's parable, um, there's parables in you know the, the holy books. You will realize there are stories that a lot of stories there. So because you would mostly remember story. Now let me start with the first story. Four straight stories and. We're going to tell now. So the Peter Peter is one of my best students. Um, is arguably my best student, but they're just uh, best is a relative term because we have people who have done different things. You know, Peter's one is one, one of the highest, but that's just I just can't say. But he's arguably one of the best students. And Peter, I, if you can look at the figure there, you know they, they, that was when he earned his first one k. Peter became someone who had hundred k. Then he went to you know earn two hundred k on Upwork. Now, Peter's story is one of the stories, his expert vetted. Peter's story is one of the stories I used to tell people when they say Nigerians cannot be successful on Upwork. Um, some people will say, I need to have a foreign account if I'm successful. If you can look at Peter, look at the location of his account, Porta Court, Nigeria, and he's been able to do this for himself. Now, between, for last year, last year, 2022 to 2023, Peter earned about 120K on Upwork. Between 2022 and 2023, he was doing about 3,005 a week. 3,035 a week, depending. You know, so he can have some bad weeks where he's, he's doing 2K, 2.5. Then he can have some good week when he's doing, where he's doing 3,000, 3,005. This is weekly. Now, last year, 2023 to 2024, he did 126K. So that means he's been averaging 120, 120 something K every year for two years straight now, as you can see. So that's Peter for you. Now, another story I like to talk about is Chinedu. And I saw him in this session. Like, I like his story because his story is one of the it's a very inspiring story for someone he's from where he started to where he is, where he's getting invites from companies to come abroad. You know, you know, Nigerian factor is there, but you know, I'm just inspired by a story that he could go from, you know, and this is not the only company that has invited him abroad, just from his con where he is in Nigeria. And they are saying, come, because your mentors on Upwork, they are, they are, we want to take you abroad, we want to fly you abroad. And his story is a very inspiring one for me. You know, it's not even about the income now, it's just about the story part. Now, another story, let's go into ladies now. I like to share, it's one of my best, as I said, they have a lot of best students, but but just focus on the stories. It's marvelous. Marvelous is one lady I like and admire very much. She's very, she's a workaholic and she flexes and enjoys herself. I like it. I like her story. Now, if you look at this, this is someone who was doing $500 per month. And I like this part where, when this was when she met me and I like, I just wanted to highlight it. Uh, I like the part where she was making less than five hundred dollars, and she was doing. Um, she was averaging. She did four k four thousand in sixteen months, and the next picture is what she did last year. So she met me in twenty twenty two September, and this is what she did throughout twenty twenty three. She was able to more than ten times what she's doing in a year. You know, in saw that I was doing like less than three k in one year, and she's able to do three thirty five k plus more than thirty five close to forty k because there are some figures that are not reflecting here. In one year so that means she can go from you can go from not she you too you can your our story can be your inspiration i was in a session a clarity session with a student and i was sharing the story of this person to her to him and i was telling him how if someone can make three five in one year and do 35k in the next year it means 10x it means it's possible for you too so that's just the number three so let me round up with the last story one of my students you know one of my best students as i said i have a lot of them and this is someone I like to, I just wanted to point his location to you to tell you, you know, we have to make him anonymous because, you know, security, Nigeria. Now, 
But I want to point his location to you so you understand that this is someone who is not even in Lagos. You know, the popular cities for those in Nigeria, they know those countries, those parts. He's not in Lagos, he's not in Abuja, he's not in Port Harcourt. He's from, he's in Oshun State and he's been able to, to do this for himself. And look at, if you can see some of the, some of what he has earned from one client alone, like one client alone paid him. Remember I did the math for those in Nigeria, I can do the math. One client alone paid him this and another client paid him this. If you can do this math, this is close to 60 million naira, 54,000 times 1,200. This is close to 10 million naira. For two clients, 70 million from two clients. Nera, that's what is possible for you. And that's why I want you to pay attention today. It's going to be two hours session, intense session. It might go above two hours a little, but I'll make sure I keep it within two hours. But I'll, I'll compress everything and teach you everything. Theory, practicals, just pay attention. Now, this is the same student um, talking about when he, when he got, this is this was this last year, 2023, late 2023. So the same student, he has crossed 100K. Um, so when people say you can't be successful from Nigeria, I like to point them to this, my students, to tell them that if these people can do it, you too can do it. Don't give yourself any excuse. So part one, <clears throat> fundamentals of freelancing, freelancing 101. Theory and practicals. So I, I designed this slide, the whole of today. I spent the whole of today to design all this. I spent the whole of today. I've not done anything. And I know how much I'm meant to be charging per hour, but I'm doing all this for you. And I like this, I like these slides, the background of these slides. You know, E equals MC square is for those in physics or science, they will understand all this, some of these uh, calculations. Um now, you don't need to be in science to understand all these things, but the idea is this: when you know. When you know the formulas for things, it's easy for you to be successful in that thing. And that's why, that's why I just love this background. Um, most of you have heard remote work, you've heard freelancing, you don't know the time. As I said, part one is for everybody, newbie. And even if you're an expert, you can pay attention, you can pick some of things you didn't know before and you can see things from a different angle. Now, remote work is working from home, mobile work. Um, it's a work arrangement where you don't need to be in one place. Um, you don't need to be in a physical location. And as I said, the pandemic made everybody understand the power of remote work. Um, so a freelancer is someone who does not commit to a single employer. So you might have been hearing the term freelancer. As I said, if you if you are here and you don't know anything about freelancing, you don't know anything about remote work, you are just newbie, this session alone would help you answer everything. Just please pay attention. Now, this is the definition of remote work freelancing. And understand that you can do it full-time or part-time. There are people that they do freelancing full. And there are people that they do it part-time. Like they, they have their nine to five, they have their business, and they do freelance. So you can do it part-time or full-time. And understand that your digital skills will set you apart. Because people come to me and they'll be like, okay, I like what you are talking about. You are talking about freelancing. How can I be a freelancer? You need skills. And we'll cover everything. Now, there are platforms where you can offer these skills. There are platforms where you can offer these skills. And we have the popular platforms that a lot of people know. And we also have other platforms. Now, in the practical sessions, I would show you this platform. We have Upwork, Fiverr, and Co. Top tab. We have the work remotely. Angel List is now well found. Um, and Co. So I would be showing you these platforms practically. I just want you to show to understand that there are platforms where, uh, yeah, there are platforms where you can under, see these things. Please, guys, can you guys hear me? Please, can you put it in the chats? Can you hear me on YouTube? Can you put, if you can hear me, there's anybody? Yeah, then it's your network. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry for that interruption. I don't like interruptions. My team members are there. I just wanted to know that you guys can hear me because that's very important. Now, so if you look at the landscape, the freelancing landscape, you realize that. Um, there's a whole lot of platforms that you can use as a freelancer. So it's not just the Upwork and the Link uh, Fiverr. There are a whole lot of platforms. You can see that it's a whole big landscape to become a freelancer. Now, what are the strategies for success? What do you need to succeed? What do you need to earn the big money or the money that you see that um showing you or that I showed you at the beginning? What are the things you need? You need four things. Now, basically, a lot of people, when they come to me to talk about freelancing to them, they think it's one big thing or they think um, I need to, it's one complicated thing. So when I tell them that it's these simple things and you can make 
you know, you can do well for yourself. People will be confused. They want me to tell them, oh, abracabadadabra, and you become, no, 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 no. These are the four fundamentals you need. And if you can get yourself these four things, you are good to go. Your niche, which is your skill, your profile, which or your resume, how to search for the jobs, and how to submit a good proposal. So let's cover all the four fundamentals here. Your skills, number one. You need to have the right skills. And uh, you would be paid based on your skills. You are hired based on your skills. Uh, understand that you need to have skills that have the highest value in the marketplace so that you are paid more. So if you are paid more, then you can you know, aim for those income goals in case you set them. Um, you need a skill that is valuable. You need something that is specialized. You need something that is high income. And there are a lot of places where you can learn these skills. Uh, we have platforms. And I like sometimes when I have the time, I used to share free skills. And I know people on, on Twitter or people on social media who share a lot of free resources. And I'm always appreciating them. You know, all these things, you can learn them for free. People will be like, oh, I don't have money. If you don't have money, go and start learning for free. If you don't have money, have time. Go and learn for free. And when you, are, when you learn for free, you can make few money to, you know, learn or get certifications or pay for more the ones, the coaches or the courses you want to sign up for. But you can start with what you have, which is free. Go and learn for free. Uh -huh. So the next is your profile. Now, your profile, you must, you must have a good profile. And one thing you should understand is that your profile speaks for you in your absence. And if you understand this, if you understand that your profile, your resume speaks for you in your absence, you would create your profile in a way where when everybody reads it, they won't ask questions that you will not be the one to answer. So when I think of this, when you are writing your profile, when you are creating your profile, whether it's on Upwork or whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on any platform, when you are creating your profile, any question a prospective client should have should be answered on that profile. Oh, okay, he or she has this kind of skills. Does he have experience? Everything should be listed on your own. So I've seen people where you go to their profile and until they'll be the one to say, and I have this kind of skills where you not put it there. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. So your profile should have your skills. Now, overview, for example, which I'm focusing on Upwork in this part, your overview should have an hook, a hook there about. Your overview should have why you, your overview should have your experience, your skills, and a closing remark. Now, we'll be having practical sessions, some practical sessions. So I'm going to be showing you some of these things I've talked about practically so you see for yourself. Now, building a winning portfolio. Now, I, I realize that some people have been having challenges with portfolio, and I don't know. That's why portfolio is even talked about here. But Because there are three things that should be on your portfolio. There are, there are three things your portfolio should have, which is your portfolio is always on your profile, or it can, it can be outside your profile. Your, prof your portfolio should back up your claim. So if you say you are a graphic designer, if you say you are a front-end developer, your portfolio should back up that claim that you made. If you can design, your portfolio should have designs showing your skills. Or your portfolio should show what you can do. It's almost, you know, they are, they are almost similar. Or, and it should also show what you've done. If there are things you've done before, they should be in your portfolio. Now, people will ask me, what of people that, what of those of us that we just have the skills, we don't have the experience, we've not done anything, then your portfolio should show what you can do. So you don't have an excuse. If you've done things before, if you've gotten jobs before, Number three, if you've not done anything before, number two, simple as that. As a designer, there are platforms you can use. You can have a website. You can have a website to create your work. That's a portfolio website. Or you can use portfolio platform like Behance, Dribble, Canva, Notion, and so on. As a developer or a data analyst, you can go to GitHub. So have, you should have a GitHub. Like, and if you, so I, I met to someone, I told her, she told me she's an analyst. I told her, where's her GitHub? She said that she don't have a GitHub. She does not know how to use GitHub. I just told her, but you can go and use YouTube to learn. It's as simple as that. Just because people will be asking you, these are things they believe that they don't even need to ask you to have. Now, finally, your social media handles can be a place where you display your work. You know the way this social media is. It can be, you can have a ripple effect on your social media. So, you should always display your work on your social media, at least. Now, there are two things here. You don't necessarily, if you are someone that maybe you have a social media angle that is for flex and bands, you can create a professional social media angle as a second one, that one that is displaying, that can look more professional. So that can take you away. You now, for someone like me now, I am my own brand. That's why, you know, I'm staying with, within brand. If I want to say something off brand, 
it's important for me to create another social media account to go and vent. Create an anonymous social media account and vent. If I have that itch, if something is scratching me that I need to say, I should ensure that it does not affect my brand. So ensure that if you are, maybe you go into some topics that can be very controversial, have a different handle that speaks for your product business and have another handle that talks. You can say anything you want, but it should, it's your brand should not be affected. Your business should not be affected because your mouth could not, you could not zip your mouth. So you can display your work on a social media account. I just give you that because if you want to display your work on social media, you need to have that at the back of your mind. You can display your work on a social media account. Instagram is very good, for, especially if you have graphics. So if you're a graphic designer or you do anything visual or you do video animation, you can use Instagram to display or, you know, and other things. Just apart from all the other portfolio this thing I showed you. Now, you can also save your portfolio, your, your samples in drives, or you can create a website, portfolio website to show your write-ups. Now, these are for people who are writers. For writers, you can save your things in drives. Just arrange it very well. And you can save, send your post to, you can put your post on Medium, you can put it on Substack, and, you know, basically, that's how to do it, go about it. Now, one of the things you need to understand that you need to be your first client, especially if you don't have, uh, if you don't have, samples some people will tell me oh i don't have any sample what do i do hire yourself first remember what i said about having your portfolio show what you can do start creating samples for you now in case you don't know samples to create you don't have any idea look for job posts in their in your niche go to you know platforms and check for the job post in your niche and start creating now i have stories of someone who um is a data analyst who went to upwork which is one of the I'm just mentioning Upwork because it's one of the most popular platforms. Please, don't be anchored by that. You can use other platforms and you don't necessarily have to use Upwork. Upwork is good. I like it, yes, but it's not by Upwork. Now, he went to Upwork and he saw the jobs there and he, he was doing those jobs and they became his portfolio, even though he was not hired for those jobs. And by the time he was in a particular interview, they interviewed him and they said, where did you see this job? He said Upwork. They didn't even ask him if... The day I hire you, the day pay you, nobody will be asking you all those things since they can see that you can do what you can do. So this is one way to go about it. If you don't have portfolio, if you don't know how to create portfolio for your profiles, this is what you should do. Now, jobs you apply for. If you apply for the wrong jobs, you are wasting your time. It's a very, very simple thing. Because I've seen people have, I've seen people have the right profiles. I've seen people have the, know how to write submit proposals, but they are applying for the wrong jobs. Now, you need to attract quality clients to yourself. Ask yourself, who is my ideal client? And the client details is very, very important. I need I should just put maybe client details and job details. Now, for every job you want to apply for, always read the job description. Always check everything about the client. Always check everything about the activity of the job or the job details, especially the job specifics. Now, because I've seen people apply for jobs and they'll be like, oh, I wrote a very rock solid, come and check my proposal. I wrote one rock solid proposal for this job, but I didn't get it. But when I checked the job, I realized that 50 people have applied for that job. They are number 51. And they are telling me, oh, because this client did not check my proposal. I'm like, if you are a client, have you hired anybody before? And when, you, when 50 people sent to you, what's the probability that you will not find who you are looking for in your 50? What's the probability that you have the time to check number 51? It's a very slim one. So always understand the client, understand the job you are applying for. Client details is very important. I've seen people see, imagine, I saw a particular client who, I was still telling what my coaching student yesterday, I saw a particular client in the client details who, he, every job he posts, he's always paying people $5, $10, $5, $10. I will be very, very, I like, I'll be very, I don't want to call myself a big word now, but it will be very funny if, I go to meet that kind of client. I want to be charging the client $1,000. Do you understand? You need to understand the kind of client you're working with. Have that so that you know, so that you don't just, because one of the reasons why you are getting no is because you're targeting the wrong audience. Even though you have the good offer, which is can be your good proposal, but you are sending that proposal to the wrong person. So if you are sending a good proposal to the right person, right audience, it gets you closer to getting jobs. Now, another particular feature that most people used to have problem with is proposals you submit, you know, and I would run you through one of, one of those things. Now, applying for the right jobs with a good profile, with the wrong poor proposal, because I've noticed that a lot of people have these issues uh, and when you check proposals, uh, proposals can affect whether you get a job or not. Now, other factors too can affect. Now, but one thing you need to know is this, one thing you need to know is this, 
you even though it's like I said, you must combine these four things I'm saying because each of them, independent of the other, can affect you. Because if you don't have one of them, the other three, and you have the other three, you can be affected. But if you have all four, rock solid, you know, get together, then you have a chance of you have a chance of getting the job. Now, things that should be in your proposal. <clears throat> I talked about how don't forget to have your hook in your proposal, add your skills and your experience, show that you understand the pain points and or how you plan to get the job done <clears throat> and ask for sale. Very important. Um, Sam's proposal. Now, I like this proposal because I remember the day Sam shared this proposal and this number one, two, three, four, five, six was me dissecting the proposals. Number one was me saying, oh, he said hello. Number six was me saying he attached portfolios to his proposal. Then number five was me saying he closed. Uh, number three was me talking, I was talking about how this proposal, he talked about his um, experience. And number four, he mentioned why me. Yeah. So basically, I ran through this proposal. I give the, I gave an analysis of this proposal. And base, uh, if you can look at it, the thing is this. One of the things I like this proposal for this proposal is that I've seen people that just copied and pasted this proposal. And what they did is they just copied and pasted it. This same proposal, if you can look at it, I just came across, I just came across as an as a I am confident, you know, onboard me, onboard me. Can you see? And two of them got jobs. Jennifer got over $3,200 job. Roland used this as a template for code email. As you can see, he was sharing it on Telegram. And I loved how it's working for people. I have 10 testimonials on my phone, 10 templates of this proposal, 10. That they just copied, they just edited this template and they've been using it and it's been working for them. And I have a whole lot of other templates that are, that are free I've been sharing. But the point I'm trying to say is this. If you follow the right template for proposal writing, you should get jobs. Now, setting rates and pricing for your services because a lot of people have issues with setting rates. Don't think about how you offer value and it makes you valuable because you need to be asking yourself, now, am I making my client money? Am I saving them money or am I saving them time? I like to make people always understand this particular question because you need to ask yourself, now, because when you come into this, so for example, are you saving them time? People will hire VA because they want to save time. Now, when you come in, even though you are a VA, when you have that mindset that I'm saving this person, this busy CEO or this busy business owner time, it helps you so you don't undercharge, you don't just call yourself, oh, I'm just doing VA service. No, 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 no. I'm helping them save time. Time is even more valuable than money. And if I'm saving them time, I'm doing something. So that way you'd, you know, you position yourself well and you'll be able to call your, sell your prices the right way. Now, I have one of my students that wrote this. It's one of my students that wrote this and I love it because the person talked about value-based pricing because the proof of your ability, the sum of your skills, a portfolio of work that you've done and your service quality, when you put them together, you'll be able to charge price alike, charge your what? Basically, you'll be able to charge your what and you should have this at the back of your mind. Now, there are different ways to charge. We have fixed price and hourly rates. Um, we have, and they have the advantage and their disadvantage, especially for people who don't know which to charge. So if you look at both, both of them have the advantage and disadvantage, so you should know. Yes, fixed price have its own advantage, but it also has its advantage. Hourly rates has its advantage. It also have its advantage. So know when to charge what is what. You know, if you don't know what is, if something is unfamiliar, you know, you can charge hourly rates because you don't know how long it will take. But if you already know the scope of the work, if you already know how much it will take, how long it will take you, then you can charge a fixed price. You know, and it's, as you can see, it's, it, both of them have the advantage and their disadvantage, and you can look through both as you are, as you are charging. Now, understand that when you are managing project and when you are managing clients, communication is very, very important. You know, be reliable. See, you will be surprised by the amount of freelancers that are not reliable. Meet deadlines, and your soft skills are very, very important. You know, managing client management, client relationship is very, very important. We want to be successful in the remote workspace because, you know, in the freelancing space, you need this soft skills angle. And finally, because we are, we are about to enter practicals, as I said, I'm compressing this four hours to two hours so that you guys we can just ensure that we cover all the basics and the most important things. I want at the end of this session, a lot of people here should be able to make their first thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar, fifty, and so on. Now, Freelancing is not by upwork alone. 
you know, as you can see, I just looked for a picture and I showed you, but, but just this gives you an idea. I know you did very well, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, you know, Glassdoor. I know some of these places, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be showing you some of them on 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 uh, in the practicals. Now, freelancing, understand that, guys. I want you to just understand that because I've seen people come to me and they'll be like, uh, freelancing is not working for me because I'm not getting jobs on Upwork. And I'm like, is it only Upwork you can get jobs? So I need you to tell you that, yes, Upwork is a very good platform. Once again, I'm not the ambassador. It makes money for me and my students. That's why I, I talk about them. Upwork is a very good platform. But if you are not successful on Upwork, try other platforms. I've had students that would tell me boldly that Upwork does not work for them. One of my one of them, every time she goes to Upwork, she will be like, she does not, she does, does not, just not does not work for her. She got a five thousand dollar per month job on LinkedIn, and I'm like, I'm happy that you are getting jobs because my own the bottom line, the metric I measure is dollars. That's the metric I measure. So if you can get dollars, if you are being paid five thousand dollars, I don't care whether you got it on Upwork. She got a job on LinkedIn, and I will cover LinkedIn. I'll show you LinkedIn. So now, remote job platforms, social media, portfolio websites. One of my cousins, he got a job via portfolio website. So he has a portfolio website. The client discovered him from Australia and they paid him about 3,000 is it pounds now for the website stuff. But they discovered that that was where the client saw him. The client used Google search and discovered him on, on, on via Australia, from, from Australia via search. He has a portfolio website that talked about his services and he designed the website for the client. The client paid him. Code emails too. You can mix code email with freelance with um, social media platform. You can mix code emails with just reaching out to people or reaching out to businesses that will need your services. In code email writing, if you know how to write code email, it's a numbers game. When you blast your code email to thousands of people, few of them will reply. Out of the few people that reply, some people would want your service. Ask yourself this question. How many code emails do you get that you yourself do you reply to? So you, you don't even reply to code emails, but you want people to reply to your code email. It's a numbers game. If people send it to you, no, they already calculated that you too, you might not answer. So yes, let's go to some practicals. This is, uh, we finished part one theory. Let's enter part one practicals. I hope we can finish ASAP so that we can move to two and three ASAP. So let me, let me stop sharing. Let me show you. Let's go to part one practicals. That's where we are going to right now. Yes. That's where we are going to right now. So yeah. Now, I believe you can see my screen because I just showed you an Upwork. Yes. Can you guys see my screen? What can you see on my screen? What can you see on my screen? These two screens can be... Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I've talked about things. I've talked about... Um, I've, I've covered all these things and, and theoretically. So guys, let's go into the practical part. For you guys, for people saying, oh, I'm struggling on Upwork. Ah, coach, I'm not getting jobs. So let's talk. So first off, this is Upwork.com. I'm using someone's, one of my students' profile. So this is Upwork.com. When you enter Upwork.com, you land, you get to you land on your landing page. So first off, one of the things I, would, I can tell you to do is this. You can always check these best matches. When your profile is very good, you can always check these best matches to see jobs that suits you. But the problem with these best matches is this, you know. The problem with best matches is this. is It's sorted by most relevant. So it's not sorted by ones that have a lot of people that have applied. So you need to be careful about it. But you can scroll through it. And sometimes, as you can see, this was posted some hour, an hour ago, but it's, it's less than five. That means this is a very good job for this particular account. So, but you can always check these best matches once in a while and pay attention to the number of proposals. Even if, you are, if the job is saying you are the best match for the job, still pay attention to the number of proposals when you are using this best match. So please, once in a while, check the best matches and you're going to see jobs that fit into your profile. Now we'll talk about why. Now, this is your this is your landing page. So how do you search for jobs? You search for jobs. Yeah. You type in anything to search for jobs. Now, one of the things on profile, let me first talk about profile, is this. Let me go back there. If you go to talent, you go to talent and you type in, you type in any niche. Uh, okay, let me just use any niche. So let's use content writer. 
content writer. Let's use content writer in an inch. So let's use content writer talent. Now, what am I doing? I'm trying to check people in content writing space. Uh, if I say you, would you type now? Plenty of people will type. But that, no man, I'll still say it. You guys, you can type your niches and I'll be using the examples from niche that I see. Any ex I'll be using your niche as examples. So this is content writing, for example. Uh, as you can see, so if I'm a content writer, this is what I will do. I can check other content writers in my niche. So these are people, as you can see, you can see these are different kind of content writers. So this is a project catalog. So I will talk about it. It's, all, it's also showing in the search. I'll talk about it. But this is a content writer. As you can see, this is even a Nigerian. Let's check this Nigerian. He's also a Nigerian from the United States. But look at these two Nigerians. So let's check them out. Um, I don't know who they are, but if, as you can see, this is a Nigerian from Port Harcourt. 100% job score, so top rated. She's a content writer and she has made $8,000 from Portacourt, Nigeria. So as you can see, you can go through her profile. You can see you can see her portfolio. She put her portfolio there. You can see her skills. You can learn from the skills she used. You can see her employment history, as you can see, other experiences. So everything on her profile is rock solid. Everything on her profile is rock solid. Then she also has... um. She has all that specialized profile. So Upwork gives you the opportunity to have up to three profiles. Now, she does something. There's something on her profile I want to put, I want to talk about. Now, AI content writing, guys. Um, we, this session is about AI. So let me, I'm already jumping ahead of the course, but let me just quickly point it out so that in case I don't forget. Now, right now, AI is currently the buzzword. So when you start doing anything, you start adding, you start plugging AI into it. It gives you extra boost, even by the platform. So let's say AI content writing, but one of the one of the recommendation I will give this person is even though our specialization is AI content writing, our tagline should also include something like AI. She should also put something AI in her tagline. It's also going to make this go very, very well. But AI content writing is fine. So she can put content writer, AI bracket, or content writer editor bracket, AI chat GPT, blah, 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 bracket close. So that's the only thing she can do on this place now. And she to really boost this particular area. But she's doing well for herself. So yeah. So, but why, why am I showing you this? I'm showing you so you can check other people's profile as a guide for your profile. No matter your niche. Check, you can check other people's profile. So are they with me, you know, in Nigeria and in the US? Um, maybe it's US or not, because Nigerians are very, very funny people. Uh yeah. So are they with me, Nigerian, as you can see, our own account too. Maybe so you can see you can see the things on her account. Uh, ah, she's from OAU. Oh, she left after she she entered school after we graduated. Um, so yeah, you can see this is see the things she has done. See her portfolio. I like visual portfolios. Um, they are you know aesthetic. So see her portfolios. As you can see, you can you know pay attention to things they added to portfolio skills, testimonials. She has employment history. One of the things on employment history is adding like a paragraph or three, two, three, four bullet points. I like that. I like that a lot. As you can see, it makes your profile look small, more, more, you know, she's even a reporter for UK. Oh. So yeah, as you can see, this is very, very good. I like our profile. Now, so if you're a content writer, that's what you do. So let me just quickly run through another one ASAP. We don't have time. Um, let me see. So let's do customer success. I see customer success in this chat box. It's customer success. We put customer success. Some of my students used to pop up. So let's do customer success. Oh, did I type jobs? Oh, I want to type jobs. Be careful. Just anytime, anything you're typing, make sure it's for talents, not... So this is for customer success. You can see this person from Pakistan. Now, another thing you need to note is this. When you're searching for people, you will notice that on their profile, the first two lines is what shows. So pay attention to that too. Why? Because on your own profile too, that's what will show. Because if you are not using your profile, you know, to hook a client, why should they read um, your profile? This person is saying, I am new to Upwork. I joined after free free to review my employment history. She charges $100 per hour. And she, you see, even though someone is new to the platform, someone has made on 1K. She's charging hundred dollar per hour, and I have people that have that have earned fifty k, forty, thirty k, ten k. Yeah, listening to me, you guys are scared to call twenty dollar per hour. See someone here, see here. No, we'll talk about it. We'll talk more about it. This person, 
uh, 10K, $80 per hour. Customer success, so I know that there are some customer success people here that all they want to be charging is $5 per hour. So you guys can see. Now, another thing is this. When you check other people in your niche, you have an idea of, you know, what are the things they are using on their tagline? What are the things? This is one of my students. What are the things they are using on their tagline? Let me not open our account, please. Let me make a... Yeah. So what are the things pe people are using on their account? I don't know this person. I can open their account. This person is from Nigeria too. So you can check customer service agent, rep, customer support specialist, customer success, and you use general virtual assistant, you know. Ah, yeah, this thing goes hand in hand. I love this profile. As a customer success person, customer support person, you can have a VA profile because they go hand in hand. You know? Well, if you know the thing with my wonderful Nigerians, we are not, we don't want to charge much. We are okay with it because when you convert it, it's still plenty money. $10, $8, and some, some people in the same niche are charging $80. No, but there's no problem. At least money, big money is coming in. 7 k is better money. Yeah, but this is, you can check, as if you're a customer success person, you can check profiles, other people's profile. See, learn from their portfolio. You will see people be like, I'm in virtual assistant. I don't know what to put in my portfolio. I'm in customer success. I don't know what, see, see someone in that niche, check her portfolio, duplicate it for yourself and use it. You know, then she has certifications in Upwork skills certification. Yes, Upwork can, can you know, you will do some exams on Upwork and they will give you a certificate. Then she did she, she did some manual. So you can enter certificates manually yourself. And I'll show you. Don't worry, I'll run through the profile of the account I'm using to teach you. And I'll show you some things on profiles. Employment history too. So this is everything you need to know on profiles. Is I've just showed you everything you need to know on profiles. Yeah. Check out Abu's profile and use that to guide your own profile. Now, when you go to your own profile, uh, you'll be able to edit. There are different parts you'll be able to edit on your own profile when you go to your own profile. Now, the point is this. The particular points I showed you, certification, you can add manual certificate. And how do you add manual certificate? So you can, you know, you just go to certification. You go into certification, you type. Now, you, you some people will say, well, what? The person that gave me certificate, they are not on Upwork. Just type it. Let's just say, um, Benga, DB certification. Now, you notice that it's saying that you cannot find my name. Maybe I issued a certificate to you. Then you just click on add a custom certification and you add it manually. Yeah, so you can only add two custom certificates. But if you don't want, if you want to add more, you can add via Credly. So you can use Credly, import from Credly. You can also use import from Credly to add. You can see employment history. You can see everything I showed. You see portfolios that add colors, you know, so as you can see, yeah. So that's about profiles. Now, let me show you how to search for jobs. Let me just run to searching for jobs, submitting proposals, then we'll move into the next part. We're still covering a lot in this part. And don't no worry, I will try and compress it so that you learn everything in two hours. I will try my best. It's not easy, but I'll just try my best. Yeah, so let's go back. Let me show you how to search for jobs. Now, if you say, oh, I'm in any niche, let me go and look for the examples you guys gave me to search for jobs. Okay, copywriting. Yeah, so let's say you're a copywriter and you want to search for jobs. You type it, so you can type it here or you can type it here. If you type it here, it will show you down here. Let me do it for you. If you type it here, it will show you down here. Yeah, it even took me up. Yeah, so let's see. So this is it. So this, if you're a copywriter, this is, these are copywriting jobs. And um, now before I even click, let me show you something. So let's say you're a copywriter, for example. A copywriter, for example, and you remember we just typed in copywriting jobs and you came here. Then, as you came as you, as you got here, you see this hourly rate $70 to $220. This is very cool. I need a content like two weeks. Ah, this is very good. And yeah, you love it. You want to submit proposal for it. Well, look at this client. This client has spent zero dollar, no review, payment unverified. If you apply for this job. With system connect, there's a very very low probability that you get this, this job. So even though this rate is good for you, even though this you like is something you can do, be careful before you just apply for any other jobs. You now there are there are things you need to check out. Now run them through. So but let's as a copywriter, if you use the job search, uh, if you use the search filters, um, one of the things you can do. I like to tell my students is. Use the less than five. Now, I also teach you how to use the others, but let's just talk about this first. Use the less than five, use the five to 10 proposals, then use payment verified. Now, you can also do payment on verified, but you need to be an expert for you to be able to do that. 
So right now, I'm teaching it what everybody should do. That as an expert, you can still play around some things I'm not mentioning, but that's for experts. But this is what everybody, whether you're a beginner or expert, can do and you'll be successful. So let's say you put your tagline, you, you put your tagline here, then you less than five, five to 10 payment verified. Now, then you can now start seeing jobs that fit in, complete the writing of a book. You know, this person has spent $200. This is the review, 10K. This is the review. So now you can click, you can start clicking these jobs. Uh, let's see. Design meta for a company. This was posted 11 minutes ago. Design met meta ad for a SaaS company. So meta is Facebook. So it can be Facebook and Instagram. So let's say you can do this. Now it's falling under copywriting and under social media ads. Yeah. So let's just say you can do this. Click. You click on the job. I like people to always save jobs, scroll through jobs. Let me show you something first before I run through it. Now, one of the things I like to tell my students, for those who are my students who know I mentioned this, I tell them to first scroll down to go to this job per page, make it 50. So that way you're not pressing next, next, next every time. So let's, yeah, fine. So that way you're not pressing next, 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 next every time. You see per page, you see a lot of jobs. So let's go to our particular job that we saw. Design a meta ad for a SaaS company. So this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, so this is what the job description looks like. So remember, so this is what, you, when you check, this is what you need to check when you are seeing every, every job. I need to move to the next thing. This is what you check when you are seeing every job. Always check the client details. And, you know, this everything about the client is here. The client is from Belgium. The client has, from, he has posted 24 jobs. He has spent 17K. That's who the client is. This particular job, five to 10 people have applied for the job. The client is not interviewing anybody yet. He has not hired everybody. He has not sent invite. Sometimes Upwork sends invite on, the, on behalf of a client. So you need to pay attention to that. Um, these are the questions. These are the questions you need to answer. These are very important. Now, so when you get to this question, there are some that are input by Upwork themselves. There are others that um the clients wrote. Now, this particular one, this client wrote it. This particular question one was written by the client. Question two was a Upwork generated question. Describe your recent. No, no, this is, this is a generated question. If you are a client, you will know it's generated. Then you can check what other people have said about the clients. Now, this is where they mention the client's name. Thanks, guys. So this is the client's name. So when you are mentioning, when you are talking to the client, you know what to do. Now, another thing you should notice, this is this client mostly pay fixed price, mostly. And this client has paid someone $4,000. This client has paid $750. So this client can pay. Like, now, all this info, you check them, and in, in one minute, you are true. You can check all this info in one minute, and you are done. You know, 10 over 10, clear communicator. So you know the kind of person you are working with. So you do all this due diligence before you apply for any job. Very, very important. Because the same way clients take their time to apply for you, to choose freelancer, you should take your time to choose the jobs you apply for. So let's say, okay, this client wants to pay hourly for this job. Very unusual for the client. The client likes fixed price. They can even convert this hourly job to a fixed price job. Let's just leave it like that. But the client likes very fixed price jobs. So let's say it is a job you can do, even as you are seeing it right now, if it's something you can do, you can go and look for it and apply for it while we are in this session. Very fun. So you can click on, oh, let me, let me do it like this. So uh, let me copy the job link. Let me copy the job link in the, in the search. My assistant will copy it to YouTube. I've copied the job links in the search. So anybody can go and check it themselves if they are on Upwork and if there's if something they can do. So yeah, <clears throat> so this if it's something you can do. But this job was posted 30 minutes ago and a lot of people have applied. The easier a job looks like, even especially from job title, the more people want to apply for the job. But let's even let's let me teach you. Let's say you are even someone that you are in the copywriting or ads, and you, there's something you can do. Let me teach you how you can go about it. So this is a sales copywriting profile, so it's related to it because it's a they say you create ads. Always pay attention to to this this you know what the client wants. Read it very well. Read it very very well because it helps you when you are submitting your proposal. So we have entered proposal writing. Um, what rates do you want to charge? Now, your profile rate, the particular profile we are using is $25. But this client is willing to pay 25 to 50. See, when a client have a range between 25 to 50, one thing you can do is this. You can, you know, you don't have to use, you can use the low upper limit. So let's say you can use 40. And you can use 40 here. What is happening? You can use 40 here. And one thing I recommend you do is temporarily go to your account on your profile and change your rate on your profile to 42. So that when the client see this policy, they'll see the 40. Because you got this job. So if you didn't get the job or the job passes, you can change your rate back to 25. So this is one thing you can do because 
This client is saying they are willing to do 25 to 50. You can use 50, 40, uh, or you can even do the whole 50. Don't be scared. Schedule a rate increase. This is a short-term job, so you don't need to schedule a rate increase. Then you can write your cover letter. Now, ensure that you've read the job description. What I do is this. I used to put my job description on a sticky note, and the sticky note is to be near me when I'm applying for jobs. Let me show you. So when it's the sticky note, when I have it, I, I, I use it and, you know. So cover letter, you type in how oh, I'm the best. There's something I want to do. I will just quickly write something. Now, I always pay attention to the client's job description. So they say they are looking for a B2B SaaS. This, okay, we are a B2B SaaS, B2C. So SaaS means software as a service. So they are a B2C SaaS, that's business to customer. We are looking for an experienced ad designer who can design creative, the creative and copy. So that means creative means picture, video, anything. Copy means the words of our ad. Ad will run on a mental program. That's Instagram and Facebook. Remember I told you? And the goal is to drive conversion. So this is what they want. They want conversion and they want someone who can do creative. So for, for from reading a job description, you know what the client wants and you can easily, you can easily submit a job proposals based on what the client wants. So you can talk about, for this, for example, now you can talk about how I am an experienced, so let's say you're applying for this particular job. Let's say you are using this particular job, you can talk about how, and I want to really just type something. Um, so we are not looking for someone to manage PPC. However, understanding about target market is important. So one of the things I used to do sometimes, I can copy the job description or the part I love. can copy it. As I said, I copy it on a sticky note. Other times, I just copy it. Then another thing I do is this. You can put your cursor here and drag this thing down. I'm telling you all these things I do when I'm applying for jobs. You drag it down so that you can see the job very well. So you can, I copy the job description here. So they say they are looking for an ad, experienced ad designer. So I can put it here and say, I remember that a, his name is Gauss. I'm going to really show you. Hey, Gauss. Um, I am the experienced ad designer. The, or your hook can be anything. You can start, but I'm just, for the sake of this one, I'm not using any of my template. Uh, on the experience I've been to, uh, to drive conversion for your for your SaaS. I already covered this part uh, with over okay. let me just read it over 10 years of experience running ads on meta platforms on other social media platforms to I'm just giving you this and I'm, I'm there's a reason I'm showing you this other social media platforms too in case in the future we want to switch to no more than meta meta platforms. Um yes yes it's very yes I understand your target mark target markets I don't know the target audience, but I'm just using this to teach you guys. You don't understand your target audience and we can convert them. This is just for the sake of this. I want to show you something. That's why I'm doing this. And we can convert them. Yes. So I can write this. I can put my, I can put it down here to so ensure that I'm right. What I'm writing is relating to the to the job description. Or basically, I just put it, add it on my, I just put it on my, I put it on my sticky notes. Now. But why I'm showing you this is one of the things I do is I copy my job description, um, my, my proposals, and I used to run the proposal on Grammarly. So remember that I just wrote this job description. Can you guys see my Grammarly screen? This is Grammarly now. Can you see my Grammarly screen? Let me see it in the chat. Thank you. So yeah, so one of the things I do, I'm just showing you this. I just want to quickly show you this. Is that I show I I so as you can see when I'm writing when I'm writing the proposal I don't I'm not bothered about making mistakes because Grammarly will correct my mistakes you know sometimes you can even use the Grammarly integrate it with your app 
So Grammarly will cor correct my mistakes and, and I'll copy it back. I'll copy it back to I copy it back to to the proposal. Yeah, so can you see? So I don't like you can see. It. So I copy it back to the proposal. So yeah, I've always answered questions. See, I, I want to have time to nobody have right have submitted a boosted proposal for this. So you can one of the things you can do, you can do, you can add boosted connect. So I don't, especially if nobody has submitted boosted proposals. So if this is eight connect, if you send your own for nine connect, you will still be in number one because it's nobody has submitted boosted connect. So the point is this: you don't have to say you, you don't have to turn your. If you want to be in number one, maybe very very well, you can put it at maybe 15, 16. But don't don't waste connect. Be careful. Only use it. You know. Let's even refresh. Still nobody. So that means that we can add nine connects and it will still be boosted. And it will, even when other people are submitting, your, your proposal will still be in the top, depending the time people outbid you. At least if the client is checking you and if they outbid you, they will return your boosted connect to go back to original. So one connect alone, you can use it to outbid. As I said, there are plenty of things. I there are plenty, plenty of tricks I want to teach you. But yeah, well, at least you learned you've learned the most important one ah, for the sake of time, because there's still a lot of things I want to teach you. So yeah, that's how to submit jobs. That's how to apply for jobs. That's how to have a good profile. That's how to use. So the other part, let me quickly clear this feature. Let me quickly run through another one again. And we'll leave up work ASAP because we need to move to other platforms. Um, yep, 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 yep. I, don't worry, I'll answer your questions. I'll answer all your questions. I'll answer all your questions. Right now, I'm not going to answer this because we need to cover a lot of ground. I'll answer all your questions. Now, um, the other there's a, there's another way to search on Upwork. Let me look for there's another way to search uh, web design. There's another way to search. So you go to categories. That's where to search. If you are you go to categories. So this is when you get to search. You go to categories. Then you scroll down. You go to let me show you this very well. You go to categories and you see web development is in web. See web and mobile. So web development. You see it. And you can check, you know, web development if you're in web. So web design, you can see it. Web design is a category here. So you can click on it if you're in web design. And you will see it. Web and mobile design, you will see by category. Now, if you're if you are in um graphic design, you see it's under your yours is under creative. Design and creative. So you can see design and creative, uh, branding and logo design, graphic design, photography, product design. Um, yeah, video and animation. Let's just add some. View and animation. Let's just add some um, graphic design, branding, and graphic design. So yeah, that's all. Um. So when you when you use, if you see all the filters that you've used, they will show here the subcategories that you use will show here. Then, um, you can use payment verified, as I've said. Then you can use Oh, because of the because of the this thing we use this this is very this um when you use keyword first and you add categories it used to layer over and it will affect your search. Now how did I know this happened? Let me tell you. So some of you will say I've been searching, I'm not seeing jobs. I've noticed a mistake that happened. How did I know this happened? I checked the number of jobs. Yeah, normally sometimes you used to they used to write, but this is their current user interface. This is just thirty eight. This is fifty. This is not normal. It's not normal. So that's why I knew something is wrong. Uh, it's not normal because, because we use this copywriting first. We type the keyword first before we use the category. So it had layered over. It's only showing me anything in this category that fits into this keyword. So um, I can do advanced search and cancel this and search. That's removed the copywriting. So you will notice to go down you will see it's now 2,000, 3,000. Can you see? It's now 3,000. Let me show you. This 38 that we saw before is now 3,000. As you can see, this one is now 2,000. So you may be because I'm an expert, I noticed the error sharp sharp. Yeah, so now these are some of the things you guys will do and you realize that, oh, I'm applying, I'm not seeing jobs. Yeah, but well, you guys, you've seen some of the things you should check. So using that alone, we've, I've seen some 6,000, 6,400 jobs. So yeah, if you are, yeah, so this is it. Then remember everything I taught you about how to 
submit proposals, how to look, look at the client details, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So that's everything on, on Upwork because we have other, other platforms to go through. But this is Upwork. You understand Upwork. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So this is Upwork. Now, Upwork is not the only freelancing platform. Right now, let's quickly enter the other platforms so that we can go on break. Yeah. So Fiverr is one of the top platforms. And in Fiverr, you create gigs. Um, I've seen people that have made a lot of money on Fiverr. Um, yes, Fiverr can be moving mad sometimes. Um, cancel your account for reasons best known to them. Um, just block your account because that's why people prefer, you know, one platform over the other because Fiverr can be funny. But I've seen people that have made a lot of money on Fiverr. So if people are making money, and remember our metric, the most important metric is money. So Fiverr is one platform. And the same rule applies used for Upwork for Fiverr when it comes to understanding the platform. Now, one thing Fiverr has is this. Fiverr, you go to the bottom, even Upwork has it. You can always go to the bottom to look for their blog. You can look for their blog. You can use it to learn everything about the platform, you know, become a buyer, become a seller. Seller is people, you know, offer services, you know, buyer and uncle. They have, they have their own terms, buyers and sellers on Fiverr. And one of the most important things I'm going to show you here in Fiverr is this. Whenever you want to do anything, whenever you want to create gigs, just check for gigs. Let's use AI. Check other people's gig on the platform. So let's check out other people's gig and use that. You know, most popular AI services. Can you see? It's telling you these are the most popular AI services right now. So it's even giving you an idea. So that means you too, you can choose anything in this region. And then you can explore the AI services. Let's, you know, it's even showing you some of the explore. You can explore them. Uh, let's check, let's look for one. Let's just say chat GPT application, people that design chat GPT application. So look under this region, see the amount of gigs. I will build a chat GPT app for you, but from this price, I will build a model this from, from this price. I will do your chat GPT project. So if you want to create, if you want to create Fiverr gigs, so these are the best selling gigs, you know, and it takes time to get to the first page. It takes time to be ranked level two sellers and go cool. level one, level two sellers, as you can see. So Fiverr is, you know, yeah, Fiverr has its own specialty. So we can click on any gig and you will, you will read. You can check what they use for their creative. Uh, you can use that as an idea for your own creative. Um, you can check what they use for the copy or the word, their delivery. Use that as your own guide. You can check, see about this gig, everything. So when you check five, 10 people's gig and put them together, trust me, you can just copy and paste them on one notepad and start picking, 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 and you use that to create your own gig. Depending the time you are learning everything about the platform. So that's how to go about Fiverr. Also, you know, go to the blog, as I've said. Um, Where's the blog? Go to the blog. See, there's Fiverr guide here for guiding you on Fiverr. There's Fiverr blog, there's Fiverr guide. Uh, yeah, Fiverr guide. Being a seller, um, let's see. Yeah, there's Fiverr guide here. Then there's Fiverr blog. There's Fiverr. Just scroll down to the website, and um, you know the blog talks about for there's blogs for freelancers for sellers. Um, I used to see uh, freelancer tips, so you can scroll through here. You can even click on the whole category here and see all the see see all the articles they've written here. See if you don't have money and you don't have any coach to teach you. See, these are things that Fiverr have created for you. Ah, read all these things now and watch on YouTube too. So you start from there. When you have money, you can buy people's courses. So yeah, that's for Fiverr. So let's go to other platforms. Let's, let's start going through other platforms. So this is Guru. Guru is also like the freelancing platform to the same rule apply. Um, You can sign up on the platform, read about the platform, check their blog, scroll to, scroll to the bottom. When you see any website, always scroll to the bottom. Uh, ideally, you can see if they have menu. You can read the menu here, and you can see the blog here about blog. If they don't have menu, just go to the bottom. So you can read the blog and get information, get see for freelancer resources. All of them, they all have resources. They are free because they want you to be free. They want you to be successful on their platform. The more money you make, the more money they make. Upwork have resources. Fiverr has resources. Go and go through these platforms. And the next one is free up. This one, they do interview before they allow you to sign up. But I've seen some of my students sign up. Few, not plenty. Few of students have signed up because they will vet you first before you sign up. They will do interview for you before you sign up on the platform. They are not as big as Upwork, but they at least they have, you know, jobs that they give people to. When you can, if you can 
pass the whole vetting process. Um, there, there's people power to people power to other uh, people power stop hiring and stop accepting freelancers. People power is like Fiverr, but like UK version because I have a student who that got a job on people power more than one student said. Is if you know how to use Fiverr, you know how to use the platform. The difference is that they they are just in the UK. Why Fiverr is in the US? That's the difference between the two of them. Um, then the last freelancing platform I like to talk about is the biggest boy. Um, if you are a newbie freelancer, don't go here. If you are an expert freelancer, try your luck there because it will take you to the bigger level. So as an expert, mid level, or elite freelancer, please. Well, mid level is is um. Subjective, but at least if you start calling yourself elite, please and please go and go to this platform and sign up. Signing up and even getting it is 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 an achievement on its own because men they only accept three people out of every other people that apply. So that's one of their own main unique selling points. So if you're a developer, finance, designer, project manager, um, if your niche is in all these things, product manager, if you've done it. If you have all this and you have experience, maybe you've started on Upwork Fiverr, you've done, you've been freelancing for years, you have clients you've worked with, you have, please go and sign up on this platform, apply, you know, and try your luck. So this is for freelancing. Um, Let me see. Let me quickly start remote jobs. Maybe I will not do LinkedIn until after the break. Let me quickly do remote jobs. If you like, quickly do it. Let me quickly do remote jobs. This is telling me I'm going to be one of more than two hours here. So let's really do the more jobs. How do you get paid? Don't worry, you get your questions will be answered. Um, yeah. So now, apart from freelancing platforms, there are other platforms you can you can you can earn. So let's go to the other platforms. Um, apart from freelancing platforms, we have other platforms like the remote work platforms or remote jobs platforms. So after this session, I will go into the part two of the session, which is how to scale your income 10x. And after that, I will show you. There are some things I want to show you with AI. Um, I want to show you how to apply for jobs, and you don't even need to write a proposal. With AI alone, you can generate proposals and submit. That's the third part of this session, and I will just show you all those ones. Now, I'm just let me just run through this ASAP. I'll run through this one very fast. I'm not doing LinkedIn now because LinkedIn will take time. So I'll just run through this and I'll do I would have a very short break, stroll around, and come back. I'll do LinkedIn. And I'll do part two and part three, and we'll call it a day. Now, this is where we work remotely. Um, this is a remote job platform. They post remote job boards. You can see the category of jobs here programming, design, DevOps, management, customer support, sales, blah, blah, blah. You can see everything here. Um, always check you know, the details here. If it's anywhere in the world, you apply. If it's not anywhere in the world, don't apply. Anywhere in the world means you feature, so it's a content writer, freelance writer, anywhere in the world. Um, but if it is UK only, USA only, Americas only, it means you don't you don't qualify. So I've seen a lot, I've seen one of my students got a job here and he got the job, they paid him very well. He's currently in Portugal now, he's a big boy. Um, this is remotive.com, it's similar to similar to we work remotely. So you remember I showed you that it's not just Upwork alone. So if you're not getting jobs on Upwork, Come and try out all these platforms. See software development, customer service design, marketing, sales. Try your luck. If you don't try, the answer is always no. Writing, human resource. So let's see some human resource jobs. Um, see some human resource jobs. Just go down. Remember what I said? This was posted yesterday. So it's USA only, UK only, US, Canada only. So mostly they are you know, remote. Uh, the human resource jobs are specific by location. Let's go to software development. So, as you can see, you see this is Europe, US only, Europe. So, any job that is, anytime you see anywhere in the job, anywhere, anywhere there, this is worldwide. So, these are jobs that, you know, they're ready to pay you between 31 to 72K. You can apply if you do front end and you apply. You compete with people, you know, you can be the best. And before you know it, uh, you'll be able to get it. And if you get it, you get paid big. So that's sweet. So then we also have Remote OK. Remote OK is also another remote platform. You can get a lot. Of, you can get jobs there too. Um, yeah. Zip Recruiter for those in the UK. If you're in the UK or you want UK jobs, remote or anything, you can get jobs here from, you know, from Zip Recruiter. Um, yeah. Now, 
There are some platforms I really like. Um, well, I like most platforms. So, oh, well, uh, well found is Angel List. Um, there's a lot of startup jobs here. So if you can get a lot, of, you can get a lot of startup jobs from this platform. I get a lot of startup jobs on this platform. Oh, I want to sign in with Google. I don't want to. I don't have the time. Yeah, so you can get a lot of jobs on this platform. Um, yeah, so that's there's a lot. Of, you know, if you if you click on, let's go back. Mostly startup jobs. Mostly startup. Let me just look for jobs. You can see. Mostly startup jobs. You can see some of the top startup jobs. I always check when the job was posted. Then some of them can be re uh, remote. So it's mostly startup jobs, engineering jobs, product jobs. If you're a product person, if you're a design person, try out, try your luck. I've seen different students who have gotten jobs on this platform, design jobs, data analytics. So if you're into data analytics too, try your luck. Like compete with the best at least and see, you know, you know, shock your sack back. You know, the sales jobs, you know, there are a lot of jobs there on this platform. Then there's Indeed. Uh, Indeed is popular. It's it's working. Uh, you can check on. You can check the jobs. So let's even do UI UX again because we've not done UI UX. So let's search because because this is what I used to teach people. Now you see remote. Always make sure that it's remote since you are from the part of the world. Uh, at least you are not going physical. So then check the that use your, the right keyword. Then you scroll down. You see the jobs. You can they, they sort them by relevance. You can sort it by date too. So you want the recent ones more than the old ones, and you will see all the job description there. You no, know, and you can see UX, principal UX designer remote. So you can click on this for example, and uh, you can see check the job description, check the team and apply. Trust me, but the thing that comes with remote job is this: you would apply for a whole lot of jobs. Like you would apply very very well. And it's the final platform I want to talk about before we go on break is this one, Startup Job Jobs. jobs. I like the platform, so you can, you know, if it's remote, you can put up, you can put remote and you can type in, let's say you're a product designer, actually you're a product designer, for example. So you can type in product designer and as you can see, you will see there are 242 jobs, full-time, remote. So, you can apply, you can click on any of them and apply. You know, let's look for now. Let's say you're, you're into maybe, let's look, let me even say virtual assistant. Say, see, virtual assistant. Mostly, you don't get a lot of virtual assistant jobs on um, remote jobs. It's mostly freelancing platform. But I just wanted to use it as an example. But you can see, let's try customer support. Yeah, so let's, yeah, customer success. As you can see, there are a lot of jobs, customer success that are remote. So you can try it out if Upwork and Co are not working for it. So yeah, um, let's go on a short break and let me pause, I'll pause the recording. I don't know if I can pause the live stream. Five minutes short break. Please just stretch your legs and stand up, like just stand up, walk around the room or go, go to the fridge, take water, take coffee, take a drink. Because the next part of this session, I'll go deep into, I'll start with LinkedIn. LinkedIn will take me more time, but I'll ensure I shall compress as best as possible. I'll start with LinkedIn, then I'll move into, I'll start with LinkedIn, I'll move into part two. I'll start talking about how to scale, the things you need to do to scale, and I'll show you some things on AI. The things on AI alone self will take me like one hour. I'll try my best. Yeah, but I just want to ensure you guys get all the knowledge to help you in 2024. So please, um let's come back here by if you are in nigeria 725 if you are not in nigeria use 725 west african time to convert your own time so let's take a pause stroll out that's like seven minutes from now so the next seven minutes i'll pause this in the next seven minutes i don't know if i can pause live stream no i can't pause let them be looking at it um in the next seven minutes let's yeah, so just come back here and continue and we we'll finish. If you have questions, we'll ask you and a sessions. I will answer all your questions. Yep. So, but this is just the best. Um, uh, if you have questions, if you have questions, I'll answer them. If you have questions, I'll answer them. If you have questions, I'll answer them. Please stretch. Even if I need to stretch, come back here in 
in seven minutes time. It's now six minutes.
Okay, we are back. <clears throat> I hope you had time to stretch. I hope you had time to stretch your legs. So, because we're going to do the marathon and complete now. <clears throat> yeah, so let's go. This, um, yeah. Some people are asking for stagnant screen without sound. That means you're not paying attention. We're on a short break. So that you can st stretch your leg, drink water. Yeah, right now. So it's time to complete the marathon. So the last thing I talked about was this platform. I mentioned, indeed, I mentioned Angel List, which is well found, and I mentioned Startup Jobs. These are three of the, this, there are three remote job platforms I like. Um, there's even also, someone told me about Crossover, and I believe I checked it and I like it. I, I knew the platform before. Um, yeah, so there's Crossover. Crossover is a remote job platform too. It's one of the first set of remote job platform that I know. Yep, so you can get remote jobs on, on Crossover too. I know someone who was telling me how he's been getting jobs on Crossover. So yeah, as you can see, these are crossover jobs. So there's a whole lot of jobs that you can you can check out on crossover too. I like <clears throat> uh crossover is just like all the other jo remote jobs platforms now. So let's go straight to LinkedIn, guys, because I said I wanted to talk about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is one of the biggest remote job platforms that you would ever know. Um LinkedIn is one of the biggest remote job platforms. So if you if you if you can leverage yourself on LinkedIn very well, trust me. You'll be able to present or you'll be able to get jobs. I told I've told you about people who have gotten jobs, like you know, I told you about my student who got a my student who got a five thousand dollar job. You see, the first person I'm seeing on my LinkedIn is my is my wonderful this thing. Yeah, she's up in my work rate on my on my on my team. is powerful now. This okay, but this is LinkedIn and um one thing about LinkedIn is that there are two ways to get jobs on LinkedIn. Oh, cancel. Don't show me people's don't show me people's messages. I get a lot of messages. I have like a thousand plus unanswered messages. Uh, yeah, so there are two ways to get. Let's just go straight to LinkedIn. There are two ways to get jobs on LinkedIn. Uh, not two ways. There are a little a lot of ways. But there are two major type of jobs that you can get on LinkedIn. Like basically two, we can we can group them under two terms. Now, the first part I like to call it uh, inbound. And the second part, I like to call it outbound. So inbound means that they come to you. Outbound means you go to them. It's just as simple as that, in and out. Yeah, inbound means they come to you. Outbound means they come to them. So now, yeah, so for inbound, for you to have an inbound, um, you need to have a good profile. So please, same way you check other people's profile, go and check, go and ensure that your profile is fully optimized. Uh, my profile, you know, it's been long I updated my profile. Well, ensure your profile is optimized. Um, ensure one of the things on LinkedIn nowadays is that pay attention to this feature. It's like portfolio. It's like where you can put portfolio on LinkedIn. So this feature here, you can add, you know, when you have posts that are doing well or posts that are, maybe you created a post or you can even add link. You can add a site. You can add anything. You can add a video. You can feature them on top of your profile. It means when people land on your profile, that's the first thing they will see. So pay attention to the featured, um, yeah. So activity, you know, I do some stuff. Now, but what I want to show you is, uh, make sure that your LinkedIn is fully optimized. This is some of the things me have done, and yeah. So make sure your full your LinkedIn is optimized. Add all your skills or your experiences. Add your education. Your you know, add your skills. Now, there's a lot of skills you can add on LinkedIn. I've once seen someone add a hundred and something skills. I've not had time to even add self. That's why it's been longer. I had the time. So then you can get a recommendation, give a recommendation on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, then courses you took, interest. But just ensure your LinkedIn profile is fully optimized. Now that's a thing, inbound. And when it comes to inbound again, make sure you are posting. Uh, make sure you are, you know, because I made a post. I just made a post of a free resources and that particular post, the amount of reach, the amount of followers I got because of this, just this post alone, you know. And that's the LinkedIn for you. You can make a post that can go viral. Someone can quote the, your post to their own community and you can get start getting a lot of you know feedbacks, a lot of followers, a lot of everything based on one post alone. So just ensure that you use this feature very well 
and ensure that you are, you know, posting relevantly. I've had people that will tell me that, oh, I don't have time. Um, so just you can use things to schedule, um, schedule your post. Schedule and schedule is the same thing. It's the same pronunciation. Now you can schedule your post um uh, on using apps. There are apps that you know buffer with suit and code that you can sign up because you don't have time now. Because I like to say if you don't have time, have money. So you can use those apps. Some of them have some free things that can help you, but you can you need to pay to get premium options and schedule how to post. So you can be posting, even though you are busy, you can create so for me now. I use a scheduler for my Twitter. Um, I don't really have time for Twitter, you know, but it's just a way to make money too, sure. But the idea is a scheduler is the one that make all my posts on Twitter. I don't even, I'm not the one posting. Now, you can do the same for LinkedIn. I didn't use the scheduler for LinkedIn. I don't know why. I just want to be posting myself on LinkedIn for now. Now, the idea is this. I scheduled, what the point, the point I wanted to make for you is this. I scheduled my posts for the next three months on Twitter. Now, I don't need to make any posts. Like, I can be busy sleeping. And my post is posting on Twitter and it's getting traction, it's getting likes, it's getting everything. And I'm not the one doing it. So if you are busy, if you are a busy person, the point I want to make for you is this. If you are a busy person, it means that you can go to your... If you are a busy person, it means that you, are, you, can, you can go to your... your um, you can go to your... You can create those things on your... With the scheduler apps and you can use that. And that way alone... Um, you can schedule things and you can be busy doing your things. Because when you want to get clients via the inbound method, just ensure that, ensure that, you know, you are, you know, your profile is fully optimized and then also ensure that you are, you know, attracting people. Because how do people discover you? You know, when you make posts and the way LinkedIn works is that someone can like your post and it will go to their own TL. Uh, someone can, you know, just, you know, be creative and you never can tell. Now, when people come to your profile, they should see value. You know, starting from your tagline, starting from everything on your tagline, starting from what you do. Like your tagline should talk about what you do. Recently, I had to, you know, tweak my tagline because I'm doing something right now. That's why I'm trying to get a particular role in sales. That's why if you see my tagline has changed, it's no longer what it used to be there. That's why it is what it is right now. So I want them because I know they will come to my LinkedIn. That's why I put this tagline like that. So you, too, you can also put your tagline to ensure that because people mostly will read your tagline. Then after your tagline, one of the things they will read is they will check your experience. Then they will check, as I said, this feature can be very catchy if you use it very well. Then they will check your about. So in this, your about, you should talk about the things you've done and your about should, you know, cover all these things. So yeah, that should be for your LinkedIn. Now for inbound. Now outbound, there are different ways for him outbound. Now you can check for jobs here. Um, you can just go to the jobs and check for jobs, or you can use this tag, you can search for the jobs here. Yeah. So let's check for jobs. So let's say you are looking for cyber security jobs remotely. Let's say you're a cyber security person. Now uh, you are looking for cyber security jobs worldwide and remotely. So these are cyber security jobs worldwide. There are over 10,000 jobs and they are remote. Now, this is, this is a pre, I've done it before. That's why you're seeing it like this. It's already... It was one of my sessions, I, my last session. So this is it, jobs. So what are we? Let me just let me show you how we got here. Let me show you how we got here. So you can type in. Let's just let me just show you how we got here. Let's use something else. Um, let's use email marketing. Please, in case just type in, just put your skills. Sometimes I can. So email marketing. You come here. And you say you want only remote, so at least you are not here. You know, she show you remote only jobs. And you come, you can tell you want job because if I type in email marketing, I might type in post. And, and I will still talk about posts for posts, but I might I'll talk about groups too. But for now, I only want email marketing jobs. So as you can see here, you, see, you can also go by date posted, past month, past week, past 24 hours. Maybe I only want to see the jobs that have been posted in the last one month. I want to at least you should show me jobs that have so you can see marketing, CRM manager, online, everything is remote, remote, remote. And how many jobs here? 3,000 jobs. So if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm an email marketer and I'm on Upwork and I'm not getting jobs on Upwork, that means that I can come here and, you know, use this too, basically. So that's the idea behind this. That's why you should also, you should, you know, and as I said, LinkedIn is very, very good. So I've mentioned the first way to get job is inbound having a good profile, 
posting at least to your niche. The second part is searching, using the search uh, board to search for jobs or the job board of LinkedIn. Now, the third part is this. Now, this is where you can now become very creative. The third part is this. Let's just play. Let me look for something else. Let's, okay. Let me see. I'm not on premium on Esther. I'm not on premium. But yes, premium gives you extra opportunities. But I've seen a lot of people that don't have, they are not a premium on LinkedIn and they've gotten jobs. Um, yes. No. What's, is there any niche you want me to check for? I'm just, I don't want to type in myself. Just type in any niche for me. Type in niche for me. Type in niche. I want to, I want to type, just type in niche. VA. Is you people, there are plenty of VAs. But type in niche. Product design. Okay, Shopify. Let's do Shopify. So let's do Shopify. Or oh, let's, let's do Shopify. YouTube too, you can type in things in YouTube. I mean, I'm on YouTube. I'm checking, okay, product management on YouTube. I can see it. I'm on YouTube. I'm using three screens now, so I can see what's going on on YouTube. Um, Yeah, so Shopify. Oh, don't send me messages. I don't want people to see your message. So Shopify. Um. So, but yeah, this time around, but let's first do Shopify jobs first. Um, so as you can see, there are 234 Shopify jobs based on these filters that we used, past month, remote, in jobs. But right now, you can also check groups in Shopify. Now, you can go to groups. You can see Shopify store owners, expert and developers. Why not join this group? You know, this is an example of a group you can join if you are in Shopify. And you can post in this group. You can be talking about your skills, your own Shopify skills. And before you know it, see, they say they are owners here. They are experts and developers. This one is Shopify product community. If you are a lady, Shopify women network. Try and join as many niche, many, many groups that relate to your, to your niche. Post in that group. Be relevant in the group. Talk about things. Make them, like, make them know that you are someone that have value. So I've talked about your profile and your post. I've talked about using the job board. The third thing I'm talking about is using the groups, LinkedIn groups. You can use LinkedIn groups to get jobs. Join as many LinkedIn groups that are related to your niche as you can and, and be, be deliberate. Because when people see what you are talking about, people don't like to talk. But the ones that talk, we always think everybody that talks are experts. So like now, why can't you start talking about the current trend in Shopify? Why can't you talk about mistakes Shopify owners are making? Why can't you talk about how Shopify owners can make more money in this 2024? Why can't you talk about how Shopify owners can leverage AI? Why can't you go to a site like um a site like um Answer the Public? Is it Answer the Public now? Answer the public, yes, I think it's Answer the Public. Can't remember. A site like Answer the Public, for example, is a searching listening tools. Or oh, they have premium version now. So you can type in any topic in this answer the public for, for example. And uh you say I must agree to put. But let's just say um worldwide. Or oh, let us say oh, we can use USA, United States. Or well, let's say if you are in Nigeria, you can use United States, English, um, Shopify. Search. Now, what this will do for you, if you go to a site like this, leave me alone. I'm not ready to sign up yet. What this will do is that this will tell you the questions people are asking for Shopify. So look at this. Look at this, for example, if you're a Shopify person. Look at the questions. See, which Shopify plan is best? Which Shopify plan is best for beginners? Uh, who wants Shopify? Who wants Shopify, Shopify's competition? So if you are a content writer and you write on Shopify, it means that you can get your ideas here. You know, see, I is showing you the ones that people are asking more. What Shopify team? So you can talk about the best Shopify team. What Shopify? So you can see how Shopify works. So for beginners, they want to know how Shopify works. That's the highest search term for this particular for the our region. And you can you know can also invest in all these keyword planners and co if. You like you can see this is a free, is a free search this thing, and you can you can see Shopify with eBay, Shopify with so you can see what people are asking people, people in the comparison in the, you know see so you can see so you can just go to this alone, 
Can you see that I didn't it didn't cost me a dime. You guys, I, I did it in front of you. You can do it for any time, but you know, when you start entering their sites plenty of time. See, they say unlock free search, three free searches per day to cre create an account, and you have three free search. So, but you know, uh one free search available. Yeah, but that just by the way. That means I just I'm just trying to show you that you guys, I didn't, I didn't uh I didn't it didn't cost me a dime. It didn't cost me a dime to do all these things I did. So, so if you're a Shopify person, for example, because we're using the Shopify guy, why not use that to answer the public, use that one to get keyword, use that to get things and things to talk about in these groups, then also learn code email writing and see how you can pitch to code emails, your code email to people in the group too. Like maybe you see some people posting and you talk, you reply one of their comments that, yes, yes, I believe I can help you. That's, these are groups are just one way you can get jobs, like on LinkedIn. Now, the fourth way that you can get jobs on LinkedIn, even with this Shopify, let me just say Shopify designers. Okay, developers, the developers. Shopify developers needed. So you can type this and you go into you go for posts instead. So learn the keyword. Um, so you can see. So when you use Shopify for developer key, you go for posts. So Use the right keyword and you would see people who are looking for, you know, people who have your keyword, who, who are, like people who are looking for you. Right now, I'm not using the right keywords, but when you use the right keyword, you can get jobs in this, using this post. Just, you get the drift. I don't want to go deep into that. So that means that you can use groups, you can use posts, you can use jobs to get jobs on LinkedIn. Then you can also target HRs, you know, code emails, target business owners. If you know how, there's a way around this. I don't want to go deep into that also. But right, but you guys, you guys just get the basic knowledge. Like I'm trying to give you all the whole fundamentals for everything I'm talking about. So yes, um, I hope with this few point of mine, you guys have been able to understand part one. Um, and what is part one? Part one says we covered the theoretical part of the fundamentals of freelancing and remote jobs. We covered uh practicals. I did some practicals on you. And uh, if you have questions, please wait till the end of this session. I would answer all your questions. I would answer all your questions. Um, so we covered that, and we covered. Um, we covered. Now that's the thing about questions; they will distort my flow. Now nah, I've forgotten what I was saying. Okay, let's just go to part two. Yeah, so we we'll covered a lot, but let's move to part two and part three and complete it. I'll show you how to use AI, uh, some of the AI skills, some of the AI strategies. I'll show you all of them. And um, yeah, so let's go to, let me just quickly share this. Yeah. Yes, I believe you can see my screen now. Can you guys see my screen now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, you can see. Which screen are you seeing? So this one. Okay, I know you can see my screen because I can see you guys are seeing it on YouTube. Okay, I'm using three different screens for this session. Yeah. Okay, so let's go into business. So how do you scale 10x your income? For you know, mid level, if you are a mid level and expert freelancer, add you 10x. Maybe you've made money before, you want to make more money, and this is just going to be a brief session. Um, you can scale, there are two ways to scale, and um, you can scale by quantity or by quality. Uh, by quantity means you are doing more of what you are doing, by quality means you are doing better of what you are doing. Now, I once had a student. Um, I told her in our session, you know, we had a session then, just our first session, and I told her to change her hourly prices, hourly rates from 20 to 30. That was the first session. That was the first time I met her. Like, I saw how much she has made. I'm like, why is your rate still 20? Remember in that first part one, I told you that a lot of people are not, um, yeah, a lot of people are not, a lot of people are not, uh, you guys don't like to raise your rates. Now, she raised her rate from $20 to $30. The next morning, she got a job that was for 100 hours a month. That's 25 hours per week. Now, that job used her hourly rate on her profile. 
if she had not changed her rate from 20 to 30, she would have been paid $22,000 every month. Nothing changed. She did not change her skill. She did not add anything. She only changed her rates. Just because she followed my instructions a night before, she made an extra $1,000 every month. So she was meant to be paid $2,000 if she was using a rate a day before. But she was now paid $3,000 for the same job. Now, that's quality for you. Quantity is the other way. And let's go into both ways. Now, when you are doing quantity, when you are doing quality, you need to understand that quality is value-based pricing, like which is the example I gave you, the story I gave you. Um, if you know how to price right, if you know how to communicate your rates, you will be able to use quantity quality. So that's one thing you want to use. That's one thing you want to you want to cover. And branding and positioning also is important, especially when you are using quality. You must be able to brand yourself well. You must be able to create a category for yourself. Like, uh, I wanted to say create a niche for yourself, but it's more like creating a different category for yourself when it comes to quantity, when it comes to quality. So because it's very, very important. Because if you can do that, you'll be able to charge rate, you'll be able to charge well and do so well for yourself. So that's one thing about quality. Now, for quantity is, if you are doing quantity, the idea behind quantity is this. Um... You must be able to leverage. And when it comes to leverage, it comes with outsourcing. Because if you want to do more, you need to have a team with you. And uh, that's where agency building, team management. Now, even though you are the freelancer getting the job, you must be able to start able, you must be able to manage people. You must be able to build and manage. Because right now your, your level is not elevating. As a freelancer, when you are doing your one thousand dollars per month, it's different from when you start doing five thousand, ten thousand. Because when you start going higher, you will need to start, you know, taking one of two of the MST roles away from yourself. And what are the MST roles? We're talking about the manager, the salesman, and the technician. Now, who is the manager? The manager is the person that manages clients, manages freelancers, or manages projects. The salesman is the person that looks for jobs. The technician is the person that does the job. Now, I need you to understand that as a freelancer, when you are starting up, you are the one doing those three roles. You are the one doing the three roles. You are the manager. You are the one doing the job. You are the one speaking with the client. You are the salesman. You are the one looking for the job. You are the technician. You are the one doing the job. Now, when you start scaling by quantity, when you start building your team, I remember there was one of my students who was able to build his team to 50 writers. Now, in the 50, in the 50 writers or with his team, when his team expanded, his own role was he was the salesman. All he does is look for a job. He does, he looks, he looks for a job for everybody. And the technicians were the writers on his team. And I was, I was able to get in some of my students as writers. While the manager, he now made the best. I like his strategy, which, you know, he, he ran it by me before he did it. And I told him, yes, this is a very good idea. So in his writing, which is something anybody else here can pick. Uh, so what he did is this. Out of the 50 writers, his best writers, he made them editors. Now, because I was, I was wondering, I was like, ah, the best writers, don't you want the best writers to write? Instead of editing, but it made the best writers edit because first of all, uh, when you write, you know, first of all, it's going to be less work for them because when people write, they because they can write better, it means they can edit better, and meaning they are not writing from scratch; they are building on what other people have written in the group, and everybody is they are good writers. But the point I'm trying to tell you is this: these roles, these management roles, these salesman roles, these technician roles are roles that when you want to scale, you must have at the back of your mind. And as I've said, it has to be by quality or by quantity. Now, one thing you should also know that you might you can combine both. So let's say this is a new year. This is 2024. Well, it's no more new. Two weeks have gone already. Um, You can start, okay, how much do I charge? How much was I charging in 2023? Maybe I was charging $20. You can increase your rates gradually. And when you hit a wall, you can reduce it back. So always be prepared to increase your rate gradually because you are not the same person you are at the beginning of last year. You're not the same person. So that means you can increase your rate gradually and there's no, you're not going to have any problem. And but when you start, when you start getting, when you start getting feed, um uh feed, feedback and when you start getting pressure or when you start getting obstacles, that means you need to reduce your rate back. But when you because you like when people are easily, when you call your price and people easily say yes. Trust me, you're undercharging. When you call your price and people say, ah, no, then 
is now getting to that point where you are getting that wall and people are saying, okay. But which you can because remember what I said about having the right when you are calling your price to the right audience. We did that in part one. So combining your quality and quantity would make you, you know, scale from where you are now. So whether you are making a thousand, two thousand, because I gave you the story of the student that did, you know, in the beginning of this session, the story that is someone that did three, five in one year and she did 35K in the next year. It is because we combined quality and quantity because okay, she signed up for my one-on-one -on -one coaching and I was able to help her do all these things. But I'm giving you all the, I'm telling you all the things I told her, giving you for free. So you can, you can go and do it yourself. So let's move to the last part of this session. Freelancing and AI. This is the last part of this session. After this last part, we'll move to, we'll, we'll do Q and A. So it's freelancing and AI. Now, the first question people are having is, will, will AI kill my job? Will AI, you know, now that AI is here, will I be needed? Will my service be needed? Now, the answer, or my answer to that is yes and no. AI will not kill your job, but AI can make you redundant if you don't upgrade. That's my answer. So if you don't upgrade, AI can make you redundant. So we're going to have some practical sessions. I'm going to show you some of the things, some of the prompts I've used for myself. And, you, and I'll tell you prompts that you can also use for yourself. You know, remember I said you need to be the smart freelancer this year. Now, this is a chat GPT cheat sheet. Um, I have about, I have two chat GPT books. I have two of them. And I have like 12 pictures. These are pictures that I saved on my gallery. I'll convert, I'll convert them to a PDF. All these pictures, I'll convert them to PDF. I'll send them to you. Everybody that's registered for this session, you get it. You get a book. One of them have 50 prompts. The other one have like prompt engineering, like the fundamentals of prompting on chat GPT. So I'll send that to you. So I'm sending you to the chat GPT book and, and I'll send freelancing resources. That one is simple. But I'm sending you three chat GPT books. Just in case I forget, you can remind me. Now, Let's talk about this, this, uh, this cheat sheets now. Now, guys, when you are creating prompts, you can use ChatGPT as your plagiarism checker. You know, it might not be perfect, but you can use ChatGPT as a lot of things. You can use your ChatGPT as you know, as a role. You can use it for as a marketer. You can use it as a developer. You can use it for now. One of the things I've used ChatGPT for is, uh, to apply for jobs. And I'm, I'm going to show you, I'll show you a lot of examples. I'll show you a lot of things. I've used activity for different things. And I'm, I'm going to show you some of the things. We would, we would create different stuff that I've done. So look at this. You can explain like a beginner. You can use, you know, this is just for ChatGPT now. Prompt for marketers, for developers, for, you know, for jobs. And remember that you can use it to apply for jobs. And I said I was, I was going to show you that. I was going to show you that one. Now. It's not just ChatGPT that is there. You know, there's a lot of a lot of um, AI that you can check out. You know, that is not just because ChatGPT is the one. You know, the main one that started, but you can check out other ones, and some of them can be very very useful. You know, for copies, for emails, for content, for like this is mainly content. But you see these ones, then even this one too. You know, Mid Journey is for arts, for design. For PowerPoint, for music, for videos, for people that are into 3D GIFs, for reels, for you know, to edit videos, to create avatar. So these are some of the tools. Everything is just you know, um, based on uh, under chat GPT and, and family. So I want to, I want to, I want to do practicals this because this session was using here. So I want to just show you practicals. I want to do practicals. Let me stop sharing. Let me just share my screen again. So I want to just do some practicals with you all uh, on ChatGPT or some of the things I've done ChatGPT for and or some of the things I've used ChatGPT for. Yes. Okay. Yes. Screen two. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, yes. Can you see my screen? 
you can see my screen. Let me just type it in the chat that you can see my screen. What can you see in the screen? I'm currently on ChatGPT. There's ChatGPT UI. Thank you very much. Okay, me, I can see it on YouTube now. It's, YouTube is always delayed. Okay, now, first off, if you're a writer, one of the things that you can do for yourself that is good is get um, Grammarly Premium. Um, because one of the things Grammarly Premium can help you to do is you can use it to get. So Grammarly Premium is um, integrated with this browser. So you can use Grammarly Premium to get citation, especially when you are writing and you need to be citation. So whether it's any 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 browser I open, and this is just Grammarly's AI. So you can use Grammarly Premium to, to, to generate citation. So you just, just type in anything. Now, some of the things we have used ChatGPT to do eh, is that um you can one of the things I've used ChatGPT to do. So first of all, you can type in, let's go to I'll be switching screens. So let's go to let's go to for example, let's go back to let's just I need to show you so it's not be like I'm talking. So example, let's go to let's go and look for jobs. Let's go to Upwork. Let's go to Upwork. Let's go for let's go and look for a job on Upwork. I want to show you one of the first things I've used ChatGPT for. But one of the things is this, and I need you guys to be very careful. Um, you can use ChatGPT, yes, but don't be as robotic. Like, don't be too lazy. Like in the sense that when you even use ChatGPT, be like make it be an assistant for you, then do the rest. You get. So let's look at this job, for example. They are looking for a creative web designer. Let me teach you one of the things you can use ChatGPT for. Uh, they say they are looking for a creative web designer. Uh, so let's, this is it. This is the old job. We've copied the job. Control C. Yes. Let's go back to, let's go back to ChatGPT. Let's go back to ChatGPT. So we've copied the old jobs. I did that for you now. I copied the old jobs for you so you can see. So now, the first thing you can do is this. One of the first things you can use ChatGPT for, for example, is you can use it to apply for jobs. Something like this. Okay, I need you... I need you to... help me write a cover letter not cover, uh, maybe a cover letter. I mean, one of the things, let me write a persuasive cover letter for the job description below. The job we copied from Upwork, type it in. So now, this one of the things about ChatGPT is that uh, ChatGPT is mostly good for is mostly good for for cover letters, which is um, because if you look at it, it's more professional. So it's mostly good for remote jobs. So when you're when you're on remote jobs and you want to write cover letter, but now another thing, the first thing I want to first teach you is this: when you're writing prompts on this, when you're using the prompt to apply for jobs, first of all. You need to be as as uh, specific as possible because your ability will just do anything they want. Will just do anything they want. You need to be as as specific as possible. You need to be as straight to the point as possible. Now, so but I give I gave you these prompts. I gave you these prompts, and it gave me back this. Now, one of the things you must learn is that you can always continue the conversation on this answer. Now, can you make it? Let me, so you can always continue conversation. Can you make it shorter? And uh, more persuasive. So can you see? So if you look at it now, this same long thing he wrote, he summarized it, he made it shorter. So yeah, so if you're applying for, it mostly works for remote jobs, but even at that, you can you can use the template here and remove all this, all this one that looks more professional. And um, see, see, can you see? Um, so you can just tweak and, but 
I mostly work for remote job, but that's one of the first examples of how to use ChatGB. Like it's very, very, you can use it to apply for jobs. Now, before I before I stop or before I move to the next thing, you can you know, there are different things you can use. There's a lot of things you can use for. I'll just cover the ones I can cover. Um, before I move to the next one, now I was speaking with a lady, which is from the US. Her name is Anna. Anna. I was speaking with her. You know, she's interested in Upwork, and she told me about Grammarly cover letter. So another thing is this. Let me tell you what I do. Let's say let's say this was a remote job. When I when ChatGPT gives me this answer. One of the first thing I do is this. When ChatGPT give me this answer, let's say ChatGPT just give me this answer. I'll just copy it and I'll paste it on my Grammarly. So I use Grammarly Premium. I have Grammarly Premium. I copy it and paste it on Grammarly. And just go back to show me plenty of document now. So I copy it and paste it on Grammarly. Um, so let's just paste it. This uh, ChatGPT's answer. So as you can see, so Grammarly will help me rewrite. Uh, it will help me rewrite everything I've written. So, so right now you are using another AI to better another AI. Like I'm using a different AI to better another AI. So Grammarly will just help me fine tune everything. To, like if I was, and remember that they will be adding all these things that you might need to edit. See all these things. Be careful. So you read through very well and edit so that you will not be as direct as possible. I just wanted to mention this Grammarly part. We will come back to it. But the person mentioned this Grammarly cover letter generator. Like, I didn't know Grammarly had something like this. So the Grammarly has a cover letter generator. So you can also use it. You can use this Grammarly cover letter generator to, um, to generate cover letter. So let's upload. It says I should upload my resume. So as you upload my resume, let me go and look for the resume to upload. So where it says the resume must be in Word documents. So I've uploaded the resume, the project manager resume, then job title, let's just say project manager. Then you say I should upload, then I just send the job description. Oh no, this is not what I wanted to put. Let me go back here. So this is the job. This job. So can post a job description here. Can post a job description here. Let me type it here. I'm just changing. This was for graphic designer project manager. So I'm looking for a project manager. So after doing that, just tell it to create the cover letter. Tell it to create the cover letter and it to generate cover letters for it. But as I said, this cover letter generator, chat GPT for cover letters, they're mostly very good for, for remote jobs. When you're applying for remote jobs, they are, that's, you know, you can use that. And when it generates, you can also use the same grammarly to edit it. I don't know why it's slow today again. Let it take its time. But yeah, it is going to generate, what did we do? Because I've done it before I did this session. It will generate, it will generate a cover letter for me. I'll be able to use it. So you can it will generate a cover letter for you. It's still again, I need to create a job description. But yeah, so that's that. Now, other things is this. I like to, for me, I like to mix Google Bad with my chat GPT because sometimes Google Bad can give me a good prompt response. So sometimes when I type the same prompt to chat GPT, I can type the same prompt into Google Bad. And it will give me a so look at this prompt now that I will type in the other time. Um, we can cut control C. Uh, no, this is sorry. we just put it on Google Bad. Google Bad is free. And I type enter. So see, as you can see. So this is you can see same, you know, same. Yeah. As I said, you need to be very, very specific so I can edit this text. I didn't know it was there. This is new. So I need to help me write a 200. 200 word persuasive cover letter. So I want you to limit it to just 200 words. So this is one of the first things you can use. You know, some of you know how to do it, others don't know how to do it, but yeah. This, so you can use AI to generate cover letters for sites and just ensure that you copy it, like, you know, you try as much as possible because don't make it, because 
AI will sound robotic at least for now. You can copy it into Grammarly, edit it, make it sound more, you know, human. Um, cloud AI too is also a similar. Uh, so these ones they have, I think, a limit of a thousand prompts per month thereabouts. So you can just type it in. You know, you can use different prompts for this. Now, Grammarly also have. I don't know why it's taking them out. Grammarly also has a, an AI for themselves. Is they have an, a generative AI that so if you're a writer and you use Grammarly Premium, you can everything they've written here. They give you I think one thousand prompts per month. They give you the opportunity of one thousand prompts per month. So imagine everything we've written here. For example, Grammarly. If you use Grammarly AI, so let's say you're a writer, you've written you've written a lot of things, and you can say you can tell it to help you improve it. So it's going to read it and say you want it to help you improve what you just written. So it can help you improve it. Uh, you can say, make it persuasive, make it assertive. So you can see, see, make it inspirational, make it diplomatic. Uh, you can see, make it more descriptive, make it more detailed, simplify, sound professional. So if you are using Grammarly Premium, for example, you have a thousand prompt every month and even if you don't have the premium, so that means that you can use this prompt idea to, to let's say, let's just copy this now to the free chat GPT now. For example, all this one first come to see. For example, copy everything here. So let's say we want to make it more, let's look for something here. We want to make it more, we want to make it more, maybe more, more, we want to make it sound casual, right? Let's just do that. So uh we can go to the same one, the same chat GPT, and just tell it. I even I forgot that we even copied it from here. So we can just tell it, make it sound more casual. So we can tell it to make it sound more because I copied it from here. Ideally, if I don't want it to. I don't want if I didn't if I was not using this prompt if I was, was if this was not the place I used it before or I've just copied or I've just copied it I would like you to make this more sound more casual and I'll copy the whole everything you want here so yeah so that's it now another another chat so for, for, this is one of the first things you can use it to apply for jobs so it makes your work faster it makes you smarter when you're applying for jobs as a freelancer. Now, so and depending on your need, you can get different ideas. I've used ChatGPT to generate slides. Uh, I write email market. I, I do some email marketing. So if you're an email marketer or a copywriter, for example, you can just talk about how or I need um give me give me eight different email subject line for my customers. I want to launch a new freelancing course. So if you are a course creator, if I, you know, you know a freelancing course that helps them and more money. Yes, you know, look for the, you know, as I say, you need to be as specific as possible. So I said, give me a different email subject line for my customers. I want to launch. So as, see, so as you can see, so if, let's say you're an email creator, if you're into email marketing, if you're into copywriting, so can you see, can you see? If you are a course creator, if you are a trainer, if you are a coach, so these are the things, these are ways that you can see. So give me eight different email subject line for my customers. I want to launch a new freelancing course that help them earn more money. Can you see? Ready to, so you can see. And you can mix it. I remember what I said about you using the same titles, control C and, uh, you know, get, you know, add, get, add the prompts on Google Bad here and Google Bad will give you the whole version. And the beauty of Google Bad is that Google Bad will even give you three versions. See, can you see? Say goodbye to underpaid. I like this title. Say goodbye to underpaid freelancing. Discover how to earn 5,000. So see, these are titles. So if I want to use titles for my FCM course, for example, I can come, come here, type, and look for titles. 
Another thing I can do is this. I can, I can, uh, uh, I can mix them. Maybe I can like one line in one part and I can use that, add it to another line in another part. The point is, you know, make it, you know, attention grabbing. Can you see? Uh, you see this subject line and cashy attention grabbing. So this is, if I'm an email, so as I said, if, I'm, if you are into email marketing, if you are into copywriting, like the, the, the options is endless. Like you can say, I need to give me, uh, help me with a script. So if you are into script writing for a it's freelancing I've been using, for a fitness, so I like fitness too, for a fitness podcast. Um, episode. So you can see. Can you see? So you can see transition music. So if you are a script writer, if you are a podcast creator, um, these these are ideas. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? So I'm telling you that you can. There's a lot of things you can do. This the ideas is just too much. So if you want to even create a course curriculum. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe you have a course idea in your head. Um, fashion. I don't know. Makeup. Create a course curriculum. Let me see. Create a course curriculum. Let me see. Including. So I'm just giving you ideas, and you can, uh, including outlines. Including the course outline. Course outlines. For my makeup course, targeting young audience. These are things. These are things just coming to my head. Mm. See, I see. So you can see everything you need to provide for you. And from there, you can build on it. So with AI, I have just given you... Now, let me even tell you something we did. Let me just show you an AI. Okay. Uh, let me show you this example first before I talk about what happened. So let me show you this example of something we did now. So I was in my... I was. So my student and I were in a session. Let me just give you an example of this. We're in a session. So let's say you're a freelancer, for example. And you see a profile that you like. And remember that you can also use this you can tell it to give you ideas on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. You can give, let me, uh, you can tell it to give you ideas on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. You can tell it to say, like, what kind of tagline should, or what kind of keyword should be in your resume. Like, this, the prompt is endless. As I said, I have resources, I'll send them to you. You guys will check all the things there. It's just endless. But let me finish with this so that we can quickly enter Q and A. I need to finish with this. We've taken we've taken a lot of time already, so that we can quickly enter Q and A. So let me finish it with this. So one one time, my student and I. Let me show you. So one time, my student and I we we saw a. Let me show you. We went to Upwork and we saw a profile that we loved. Like where I was, they were telling me they had issues with profile. Remember that. Okay, let me. It's two things I will show you. I'll quickly show you two things. Um, so we went to Upwork. Let's see, let me look for people that are talking about. Um, um, so someone says product management. No, no, I don't know it's product management. Let's just say digital marketing. So let's say digital marketing or anything, it can be anything. It's talent I want, not job. Yeah, digital, it can be anything. You can, you can use any niche. But let's just use, let's, let me show you what we did. So let's say, okay, this person is very good. Person has, has the event 300K, right? So this, this profile should be very, very good. But I want to show you. Let's just let me quickly show you. Um, so what we did is this. So if you see an overview that you loved, if you see an overview that you loved, um, look at this overview, for example. Let's say you love this overview. This, the overview makes sense. Let's just use whether it's good or not. Let's just use it for this example. Copy. 
he copied this overview. And even though you are not a digital marketer, but you love this overview. So you can go to ChatGPT. Uh, let's go back to ChatGPT now. This is one of the things me and my students we did one day. Let's go back to ChatGPT now. Um, so I, I want to give me any any other niche. Just give me any niche. Mention any niche on, your, on the chat or YouTube. Okay, data analyst. I've seen data analyst. So um yeah, so we saw this, we saw that profile overview now. We loved it. So can you let's go to ChatGPT? Can you create a an overview? Oh, okay. An overview for a data analyst similar to the one below. So remember that it was a digital marketer's profile we saw that we loved. We saw it, we loved it, and we told Chad, we told Chad, we can use this to create, see. So remember that, I want you to look at, remember that data analyst, this C. So can you see? So we saw this, we went to Upwork now, we saw this overview. So let's, we saw this person, she has made 300K, right? Okay, short-term rentals, I'll do something like that. She had made 300K and, you know, uh, we saw the profile on uh, social media marketing. Can you create a similar, so you can, as a freelancer, you can go to Upwork. Let's say you see a, a, a maybe Josh Bonds or anybody, you like their overview, but remember that their niche is different from yours. Maybe freelance MVP. All those guys that made the, um, the big, big money. But you like their overview, but you want to copy it for your own niche. So you can use it. Can you, you can use this key prompt, this prompt and say, can you create an overview for, I'll mention, I'll use another one now. Using, using um, similar to the one below. Can, can you see what it did? ChatGPT converted everything to data analysis. Can you see expertise? Can you see? Collect school, can you see proficiency in addition? Can you see? So you can mention, you, you cannot go through it, put it on Grammarly, as I've said, and you know, fine-tune it to your taste. Um, can you let's just say short-term rentals? Do the same. Remember, see, one of the things you should know is that you can talk to ChatGPT like you're talking to someone, you know, it's AI. Do the same for for um short term. Rentals niche web and B and B short term rentals niche. So can you see? So for you that say short term rentals, can you see? So it just generates all this like that, and you can you can see. Can you see? Bam. So you can you can do this, you know, for the person that says short-term rentals, you can do this, copy this into Grammarly. For example, one of the things I like to do when it gives you answers like this, copy it into Grammarly. Um, control C, copy it into Grammarly, control this, this, control V. Oh, give me what I want to control. Control R, control V. Yeah, so you can see then Grammarly will help you at least. Uh, Grammarly can help you now fine tune it better than, yeah. So, yeah. And you see, so, yep. Yep. So, this is it. Your overview is done for Upwork. So, if you like anybody's overview on Upwork, maybe Josh, maybe Olayim Kaz overview, if you like the overview on Upwork. You can copy it and tell ChatGPT or Google Bad to to tell to help you do a similar one for your niche. That's it's as simple as that. So there's a whole lot of see we can go through a whole lot of stuff that you can use it for. Just it can make you smarter. It can be your assistant. You can just ensure that your work is smooth, easy, and um, yeah. So I like this one too. There's a whole lot of them, but I can't cover all of them. Um, I like Chat PDF too. Chat PDF. You can talk with any PDF. Um, you can drop your PDF and ask questions. There was a day I was meant to write, I was meant to read the 200 page stuff or something. So I just dropped the PDF and I was just asking the question based on the things in the PDF. And it was answering the things you saw there. So you can also use, let's say you are trying to do research. There's a whole lot of stuff. 
I'm ready. We've, we, we've gone way past our time. Let's just enter. I believe with the few point of mind, you've, you've, um, you've been able to get a lot of stuff from today's session. Um, um, so let's move. Let's just go to the q and Okay, let's just end this session and do the q and a. Let's just quickly end this session. Let's do q and a because I know q and a is where people used to have Q and A is where people used to ask all these questions that will make me cover the things I have not covered. Yeah, but yes. So let's go into Q and A, and let's quickly use Q and A to round up sessions. I can see your questions on YouTube. Um, yeah, and answer some of your questions on YouTube. I will go through them and see the ones I can answer. So finally, let's just round up. Um, there are a lot of challenges that come with the freelancing if you are newbie. Um, inconsistent income, finding clients, blah blah blah. You get the slides. Uh, self discipline very important. Handling finances also very important. Setting boundaries, professional development, and goal. client dependence. See, relying to this this number nine is very very simple. very very important. Don't rely too much on one client. Relying too much on one client is risky, because when you lose the client, you can lose your mind. And there's someone listening to me that can relate to everything that I just said now. I hope she's still listening. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Thank you very much, everybody. I would like to take your questions and answers now. Um. So yeah, I like to take your questions and answers now. Uh. I like to. Yeah. So if you have questions for me, please you can start asking your questions, and I want to make this as I want to make this as organized as possible. I want to answer all your questions, but I can't answer all your questions. So, but I will answer the questions that I believe are very, very important. But I hope with this few point of mind, I've been able to, I've been able to, you know, help you for those who are starting up in freelancing, for those who are trying to build. Now, I would have loved to go deeper. I would have loved to have the time. Trust me, if you give me the time, I'll do it. The last session I did, when they asked me, I mean, I told them it's four hours because I wanted, for those who are, if you know Tech for Dev, you know now, you know that I gave you the four hours and people were very, very impressed. So I would love to do the same for you because but time time is not what we have. But I hope with the few points I've covered for, from the beginning, I hope you can you've you've been able to get the insights. Now let's go to Q and A. Let me answer your questions, please. If you have questions, it's important to ask me the the questions so that I can help you answer them. Um, so if you have questions, answer them now. Then, yep, yeah. I have an offer. For those, because I've seen some people, they say they, they are interested to have a course. Yes, I have a course. I have trainings. I teach people. I have students. I will show you. I will explain the offer for those who are going to stay to listen to that. But basically, this webinar is for training, not selling. If it's for selling, I will only train you for like 10 minutes and I will sell all through. But this webinar is a, is a, is a, tra is a webinar for training. I, I I can sell. I sell with my full chest. Trust me. But when I want to train, so I train with my full chest. I don't mix both. So please, if you have questions, I would like you to ask me your questions. Um, yeah, and basically for those, because most of you are already living now because you are tired. Now, if you are, if you want to leave, you can drop your feedback on Twitter using the hashtag. Just using my, let me add my chat. Using my handle. I'll answer your question, Christy. Using my handle, you can, you know, drop on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or Facebook. Just mention me. My handle is Benga B on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, and if it is Instagram too, on Twitter, and is going to be Twitter and Instagram. I'll answer your questions. I'm seeing them. Going to be on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, Eunice. Then my name is going to be on Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah, so um, you never can tell. I can see your, I can see your posts. I can like your post and I can give you freebies. I can just like it and say, oh yeah, I'm giving you something. I can, you know, I can enter Santa G mode when I want to. It's my it's my choosing. So on Facebook and LinkedIn, but I want you to just, you know, if you learned something, if you got value, go to Twitter, go to LinkedIn, go to Facebook, mention my name so that I can see it and retweet it. Yes, thank you, Eunice. Go to Twitter, go to Facebook, go to LinkedIn, go to, yeah, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. And, you know, you can just, you know, use the, just mention me. Hashtag is just kill up 2024, really. I use hashtag proud teacher. That's all. Maybe let me just drop that hashtag. Uh proud teacher. Yeah, proud teacher. And because that's the only hashtag I'm interested in right now. And scale up 2024. 
Yeah, so yeah, just mention me, tell me what you learned. And if case, in case I said nonsense too, you can mention it there that you I wasted your time. Use the hashtag Sprout Teacher, most special. That's the most important hashtag. And talk on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Feedback, please. And I would, I would, if I if I like your feedback, I can come to your DM and, and I just tell you what do you want. I can be the genie in the bottle. What do you want? Let me help you instantly. And you can get what people pay for. I can give you for free. I do that. Okay, so now Q and A. Let's start answering. And is I'll try as best as possible to answer the ones I can see. So if you have questions, Facebook, um, I say for YouTube people, if you have questions, please drop your questions. Zoom, drop your questions. I will see a lot of them and I'll answer them. Now, from YouTube, Fountain of Wisdom said, Upwork seems to be saturated right now, especially for newbies. What is the magic to get a job? No. So for Fountain of Wisdom, there's no magic. And um, saturation is no problem. Saturation is not a problem. Now, why, why, do I, why am I saying that? Or why do I say that? Saturation means there's demand and supply. Like, do you think that with the tech products available, with the fintech or with anything, with any product available, why are there still new fintech or new startups every day, even with the ones that are available? Because there are people that believe they can do better. So, first of all, separate yourself from the crowd. I've taught you portfolio. Create a lot of portfolio that backs up or your work. Do that. Separate yourself from the crowd and deliver value. You can start today and make more money than people that have started before you. That's the thing about freelancing. The growth is geometric. So whether you're a newbie, separate for yourself from this crowd, it's one client that you need. According to Upwork, there are 835,000 clients that I hired on the platform plus last year. It means that you only need one client. And trust me, there are newbies. As you mentioned this today, Fountain of Wisdom, there are newbies that will start tomorrow. Tomorrow, not today. They will start tomorrow and they will make money most of them will be top rated by the end of this year. Not most of them. Some of them will be top rated before the end of this year. And they'll make a lot of money. And they are just newbies that signed up on auto Upwork tomorrow. So whether they are free, and see, this question you've asked, they've been asking this question. I've been doing, I've been on this platform. Next year, you will make it 10 years that I've been on Upwork. And this question you asked, they've been asking this question for, 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 for yeah, it's the same ask tag. Proud teacher. I'll use proud teacher and mention my name. And I would, you never can tell. You can get freebies from me. I won't say what I'm giving you. Now, so this question says, for someone like me that is into photography, cinematography, WordPress, can I set up one profile? Okay, so I've been seeing the one profile question. So guys, on Upwork, Upwork gives you the opportunity to have three profiles in one. Let's go into, let me show you. I've, I've been seeing the profile questions from YouTube, from up, from, from uh, this thing. So for, for this thing, for... Let me share it. Hope I give you the opportunity of having three profiles in one. So if you check, if you see the profiles we were checking, you will notice that some of these guys, they have three profiles. So now, what? why why do you need three profiles? So when you have three profiles, you can, this person does not have, you can specialize or you can narrow down. So when you have places, things like you have, maybe you have main skills and you have sub skills, you can narrow down. Uh, look at this now. This person have the main profile, then they have a social market media marketing profile. This is called specialization, and they have an SEO profile. So yeah, that's the beauty of having profiles on, on um on three profiles. So yes, now how do you create your three profiles? You go to your profile settings. I hope I'm able to show you here. You go to your profile settings. You go to the profile. You go to profile settings. You go to the profile settings, then let's see. What in the password? So you go to the profile settings, then yeah, you just go to your profile settings. Ah, it's caps lock. Yeah, you go to the profile settings, then you just uh, you scroll down, you add specialized profile. 
How do you fund your Upwork account? That's a very good question. Now, funding your Upwork account, area, area diaries. I don't know if it's area from, from YouTube. Funding your Upwork account is um if you want to fund your Upwork account, you need you need to like you need to get connect. And I'm also going to show you that now. Now you need um the problem with connect buying buying connect is that if you are from Nigeria, um your Nera cards you know are, are limited, so you can't buy connect with those cards. Um yeah, so this is for this is for for you go to your profile settings, then you scroll down, you scroll down, you scroll down. This is where specialized profile. This is where you get. So you can rearrange it. You can add specialized profile. This is where you get new. For those who want to have two more profiles, if you want to add two more profiles to your profile. Now, for the next question on funding the account, this is where you go to membership and connect still in your profile settings and you buy connect. For those who ask the connect question, now the idea behind buy connect is that you need to fund, you need to use money to buy connect. So one of the things you are doing, one of the things you do is that you you uh, you use, for example, fintech platforms. They give you the opportunity of using their for fintech platforms. For example, you'll be able to use their cards. Now it can be challenging if you're in Nigeria, but Another thing you can do, which some of my students are doing, is go to your bank and get the dollar card. It might cost you some money, but at least it's going to give you less stress. I know the G Africa, I know GT Bank Mastercard. One of my students, she just went to the dorm, got created a dorm account, GT, got the dollar card, and she has not had issues with everything that you know, funding, buying connect. So yeah, that's the answer to that particular question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another platform, do they require? So no, it's only Upwork that require Connect. Other platforms, they are free to sign up to apply for jobs. So Bolade, you're welcome. Yeah. Are there questions that I'm missing? Okay, yes. I've answered Joseph Idiku from Zoom. I, do, I hope I pronounced your surname well. I'm always particular about that. But let me just call your name. Joseph, Um, yes. So photography, cinematography, WordPress, you can create profiles for that. Connect are used to apply for jobs. Yeah. Any other question? Any other question? Yeah, a newbie to freelancing. What are the quick skills? So there's nothing like quick, Moji, from Zoom. There's nothing like quick. Don't look for quick because quick is challenging. Um. Okay. I can see your question, Oba, from YouTube. So, uh, Moji, you're not looking for quick. So the idea is this. Uh, you can learn skills that are short-term, meaning that skills that take you short-term to learn. But the, the thing behind, the thing beside, when you start learning skills that take short-term to learn is that um, those skills, they would, they would, how would I put it? When they take short-term to learn, they would, um, what's the best word for this now? When they take short-term to learn, they have the demand for it is too much. Um, so in the next... Five minutes will be ending because I believe everybody has started losing concentration. Even me, I'm already losing steam. If you have questions, ask it in the hashtag on social media. <clears throat> put my heart, put mention me and ask your question in the hashtag. I'll be I'll answer your questions on the hashtag. So on social media, follow the hashtags and look for the questions and you can get. Um, short-term skills. They are not short-term. So I understand what you are saying. See, skills. There are skills that take short-term to learn. I understand what you are saying, Muji. I'm just. I just don't like giving you. I don't like giving you short-term answer because the thing behind short-term skills, Muji, is that when you learn short-term skills, the demand for it, you start applying for jobs that you see, you are applying with fifty people. It's because the skills are easy to learn. So everybody has that skills. I know what you are saying. So yes, you can learn skills that take two weeks to learn. Like say, customer service. Take a short period to learn, but even though you still need to separate yourself from the crowd, um, virtual assistant take time to learn. So yes, you can learn those kind of skills, but as I've said, if if um, the idea is this, it's very simple. You need you need to separate yourself from the crowd because the, those short skills or short term skills, so to say, that you're saying, they would not, they would not, you know, they would not, they will not give you like. For you to end with it, you need like your competition will be so high 
you'll be competing with a lot of people. You'll be facing a lot of challenges. So yeah, that's that's why I'm always skeptical answering that question. Don't mind me. That's just why I just like I'm always skeptical answering that question. Yeah. So yeah, let me take one or, one more questions. I will call it a day. Thank you very much, everybody. Let me just take one more question. and we we'll call it a day. One more question. If you have one question, if there's a question I've not answered, how do you create portfolio? I've, I answered this question in the session now. Just check other people. Check other customer service from YouTube. Mohammed from YouTube. Check other customer service um, and use that to create your portfolio. Mohammed from YouTube. Yes. Uh, what what question? I want to take one more question. I will just everybody can go. We'll call it a day. Yep, one more question and we'll call it a day. Okay, so since there are no questions, let me just round it up. Let me just run, let's just round it up. It's up. Let's round it up, it's up, and everybody can go. This was a wonderful session. So if you have questions that I'm not answering, just use the hashtag. Ask me, you can tell me what you've learned, then ask me your questions and um ask me your questions and we'll call it would we'll, uh, yes. Yeah, so let's round up and let's go. Let's so that everybody can go, please. Let's round up and everybody can go. <clears throat> Let me see. Stop sharing. Ah, that's what I I, I like to give the best. Thank you for reminding me for the materials. Out then I would send. I'll send. I'll send. You have a suggestion. Ask your suggestion. Make your suggestion, Ajibola. Um, I'll send. I'll send it. I'll send the recordings to you, and I'll send some resources to you. But these ones I said I was going to send to you. But I need to say one more thing. Let me just run, let me just use this to round up. You have a suggestion, Ajibola. Say say it's speak your mind. It's free. Yep. So. Yeah, so um, ladies and gentlemen, the life is, you know, I, I started with four stories. Let me just round up ASAP and everybody can go. Now understand that your life can change. You can change your life. Um, for those asking, yes, I have a course, and I have a course for 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 those who are interested in in learning from me. Um some of my team members are here, they are they're always delivering value. Uh they've been delivering value. 247. Some of my core students are also here. Um, they can testify to the value they, they get 247. So, yes. Uh yeah. So the idea is ah, so that this is the name of my course, FCM 2.0. And the plan is to is this slide changing. The plan is to ensure that the plan is to ensure that everything is covered. Upwork, LinkedIn is going to be updated. I keep on saying I'll update it. I've not, but it's going to you you get value, and um, yes, Ajibola, I have my course on affiliate platforms. Trust me, um, it's on S Partner, it's on Digistem. Yeah, my course is there. Yeah, so my course is on affiliate platform. So yeah, so yeah, so this is my course. Yeah. Yeah, my course is an affiliate platform. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah, so these are some of my student testimonial once again. Um, these are some te testimonials. And you realize that these are people, these are what people have made in the last one year. It tells you what is possible. So, and I like to say, if they can do it, you too, you can do it. Um, I like all testimonials. Every testimonials you see here, I mean, I'm happy by that. For those that made two k, one k, it means it tells me that they'll be able to do more. Um. So yes, there's a whole lot of student testimonials that I have, and I hope you can see some of them. You know, these are some of my students, and not just guys. You know, there are ladies too that are doing so well. I have Motun. I have um. Our Tony has a testimonial today. Says I need to share a testimony. You know, I like a story that. I've been getting a lot of testimonials that I don't really share, but I need to share Olua Tony's own today. So yes, you can change your life. You can change your life with all this. Let me just go to the end, please. Even me, I'm tired. Almost three hours. God, I've tried. 
Uh, let me say it's not just on Upwork too. Um, you know, you have people, ah, Susie, Susie is doing fine. Uh, Fiverr people, you know, LinkedIn people, you know, so it's not just on Upwork. You can change your life. I don't know the slide, the picture that is showing. But I'm sure I'm sure I'm using both screen to talk. I don't know. I don't know the one of them that is showing. So it's not just Upwork, as I've said, Suzy and Co. And LinkedIn people too and, and Co. So yeah. So finally, 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 you know, I have a lot of testimonies. Finally, finally. Um yeah. just go and learn a skill or build your old skills. Pick a platform, start earning. Because if they can do it, you too, you can do it. So thank you very much, everybody. Ah, um, we are tired. I know everybody is tired. Next time, I won't talk this much. But it's because for me to be able to teach you, I must make you learn everything. And it will take four hours. Maybe next time, we'll just be doing a two-day webinar instead. So that we can cover in two days. I think that's what I'll just do if I want to do any webinar like this. Because one day, I must... I like to teach you everything. I like to make you understand everything. Yeah, so thank you very much, everybody. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Please, if you if you send me messages, you can send me messages. If you send me messages, ah, it's difficult for me to answer because I get a lot of messages. And um, but please, what you can do, as I'm making everybody go now, what you can do is share what you've learned, mention me, then ask your question. I will see all the mentions at least, then I'll answer you. Like because I run away from my inbox. I'm running away from my DM, my inbox. But if I'm running away from my inbox, I'm not running away from mentions. Because mentions is not plenty, so I can answer. So mention me, and I will answer you. Yeah, I'll answer your questions. You know, tell me what you've learned, then just ask your questions. Well, what you've learned is not important, but it's good to say what you've learned. But ask your questions on the hashtag, and I will answer your questions. Trust me. I will answer your questions, and I would... I'll do, because I know there are a lot of questions. I'll try as much as possible to just, you know, answer all the questions I can see. Yeah, so bye-bye, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, uh, you know, being here to this time. You guys, you tried. You know me, I'm tired. And YouTube people, too. Thank you very much. You will all get the risk. I'll send a message to everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy. Bye-bye. I hope you got value. And if you got value, go and talk about it on social media and ask your questions on social media. Ah, I'll answer your questions on social media. Next webinar will be two. I can't do one day like this again. It's two. I didn't even cover everything I want to teach. I just ran through things fast, fast. Bye-bye, everybody. Wait, I should have given you the opportunity to talk safe. I should have omitted all of you. Yes. Well, you guys can unmute yourself now. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I had the one. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. You talk, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Very much. Uh, thank you for your time. See why I didn't want to take it. Thank you for the proud teacher. The proud teacher. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, no. Carlos, Let's just go mention, me. Let's go go mention me on social media. Just, I think I know your name. You've sent me a message before. Carlos, mention me on social media. Send me a message where you've sent me the message before. You sent me a message, I think via email or something. I know your name. Carlos, send, mention me on social media or send me an email. I know your name. Just... Uh, I would answer your question. I can't see. I'm seeing a lot of things. Like and I'm already tired. My eyes said is not seeing things. Well. It didn't say much about how we can get your course. Ah, I didn't say much. Well, I will send you a message to you. I'll send it. I'll add it to the message I will send. But my course is. Oh, I should have added that. I'll send it as a message. I'll send the link to the course. So that will be in the mail you will get. Like you will get like two, three different mails. I'll say it. Will, I'll talk about it first more. Okay, but the link, yeah. You, let me just add the link here. But my my assistant can add it. Uh, let me add the link here. Let me add the link to my course. 
Yeah, where is it? You just add it there. Yeah. Coach, please, can we get the recorded video? Sorry, the recorded audio of this uh, course, please. Um, it's, it's live stream on YouTube, so it's going to be on YouTube for live. And um, I would, I would, I would send it to someone to edit and send to everybody. We just edit parts there and send to everybody. I'll send, I'll send more like this. Tomorrow is Sunday. So maybe Sunday evening or um, latest Monday, you get it. Okay, so uh, good evening. I, two consecutive times, I tried filling up uh, some details like my name and my email address. After filling the whole thing up, it keeps saying uh, this box needs to be filled. And I'm, I found it difficult. I was even surprised that I was able to join this class because I couldn't register because of the problem. I don't know if it's from my end or if it's a technical issue. No, it's not, it's not from my own end. But what will happen is this. I will not... It's something I use. I'm not going to use it again. Ah, oh, how will I type this? Did they type my course yet? I will send that image to everybody. Uh, so it's not from... Your, it's, it's what I use. It's from Zoom. It was just selecting people to register. I'm not gonna use that. I'll use Google Form next time. I've always been using. I just said let me try it this time around. So a lot of people were having issues with registration. So it's not, it's not even only you. Like I had like 20 people plus people with the same issue. So it was just selecting people to register. So I don't know. I didn't know where. Let me. So let me drop the link to my Thank course you. here. Oh, it's client magnet on on seller. Let me just drop it. Ah, I will like copy and paste it on this. Ah, I'll send it as an email to everybody like this. I don't even know how I can copy and paste it. It's client magnet course. You will get, I'll send it as an email. That will be the first thing you will speak. Especially because you asked. I'll send it as an email. It will be there. I'll send it to everybody. Then the next part you will get is, you will get the recording of the video. All right, guys, go and be with your family. You guys are still here. Mm -hmm. like, me like that. Thank you. Go and be with your family. Plus the materials. Yes, I'll send the material. Yes, there's a special offer. I meant to ah, see. I didn't think I did not mention. I even created a coupon code for this session. But I, I got so tired. So there's a special offer we give everybody. Yes. Nena. Yes, there's a special offer we give everybody. So there's a coupon code that will expire. I would increase the expiry dates. It's going to expire on Monday. So maybe I'll shift it to like Wednesday. I, I did a special offer. I slashed the price by almost 50% safe. But see me, I don't have the time to talk about it. Because this session is just about training for me. But I would add it to the course because even I like money too. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. I'll end this now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.